It is a beautiful evening for football. Ben Hill Griffin Stadium on the campus of the University of Florida. A sea of orange and blue and 85,000 are here to watch the number one ranked Florida Gators take on the Central Michigan Chippewas of the Mid-American Conference. And hello again, everybody. I'm David Steele. Thanks for joining us on Sunshine Network for University of Florida football. The Florida football team ranks dead last in the Southeastern Conference in total offense. Unheard of. Not expected to last much longer. Let's bring on Nat Moore, my broadcast sidekick. The Gators struggling offensively last week, Nat. We don't expect to see that again tonight, do we? Well, this is a chance for them to right that wrong. You know, they're playing Central Michigan, a team that's very weak defensively, but even more so, Doug Johnson gets some help this week. He gets some offensive linemen back. He gets all of his receivers, but the receivers have got to do a better job of going down, making plays for him. They got to make some big catches and even more so they got to come up with big blocks downfield to spring the running back to get into the end zone. Well, Florida's defense made a lot of big plays last week. They really look good. We expect more of that tonight. No, we expect more, but we're going to miss Reggie McGrew. You know, Reggie McGrew has been the run stopper. This Central Michigan team likes to run the football. So Mike Moulton, a senior, fifth-year senior, is going to have to come up big. He and Ed Chester are going to be responsible for stopping the run and getting penetration, forcing them to have to throw the football. We'll be keeping an eye on Moulton there on the defensive line. We'll also be keeping an eye on the Florida secondary. Eli Williams, one of the top running backs in Gator history, is making his first start tonight on the defensive side of the the ball. Let's go on the sidelines now to Larry Vittell for more. Larry? Well, David, for the past three years, Eli Williams has shared playing time at tailback with Brett Taylor and Terry Jackson, and despite part-time duty, managed to run and receive for a total of over 3,000 yards. But coming into this his senior campaign, both Eli and the coaching staff felt he's got to be on the field more often. Well, Anthony Lott had graduated from that open corner spot. Eli went after it. He won the job in spring practice, and today he begins his senior year at a new position, a key position when you think about who's coming to town in two weeks. Uh, all right, Larry, Florida against Central Michigan. The Gators 42-2 and two in the swamp under Steve Spurrier. The opening kick when we come back to Gainesville. Afternoon football at Florida Field. Ben Hill Griffin Stadium is filled to capacity. The Florida Gators are ready to take on the Chippewas of Central Michigan University. Gator fans are looking for more out of their team offensively this week than we saw last week when Southern Mississippi came in here and really gave Doug Johnson and that Florida offense all they could handle that more. Well, it was a tough afternoon, and uh, I think the big thing uh, was that he, he made a lot of poor decisions. Uh, several times he was, uh, he was not getting good depth and staying back there, stepping up early. And Jaquez Green, uh, that really came up big, did a good job. We talked earlier about guys helping the quarterback. Well, Jaquez was one of the guys that came up big helping the quarterback last week. Green had eight catches and a touchdown against Southern Mississippi. A, a good defensive football team. Central Michigan will not put that kind of defense on the field here tonight. Uh, for one thing, they do not play a lot of different types of fronts. They don't mix things up a lot. Pretty much a, a standard defensive uh, alignment from Central Michigan. And Southern Miss uh, really gave the Gators a lot of problems with their mixed up lineups. And, and that's what you try and do when you get a young quarterback. You try and confuse him early on and, and give him some things to think about. And I think Doug had quite a few things to think about last ball game where hopefully Central Michigan didn't see the film and put some of those schemes in. Robbie Stevenson will be the kickoff man. Gator kicking game in a bit of a state of turmoil as we go to the second week of the season. Flowers and Allen are the deep men for Central Michigan. This will be Allen, but he won't have a chance to bring it out. There is a brisk wind kicking from left to right from north to south here at Florida Field. And Stevenson, using that wind to his advantage, kicked it through the end zone. So Central Michigan will have the ball at its 20-yard line. And uh, the Florida Gator defense, Ed Chester and Moten at the tackle spot. Moten, really outstanding pass rusher. Not as solid as Reggie McGrew in stopping the run. McGrew will not be back probably until the LSU game. Linebackers, outstanding. Rutledge and Thomas. Mike Peterson backed up by Javon Kirst. We'll see Kirst on the field plenty tonight as well. There's Eli Williams making his first start on the offensive side of the ball. Pico Brown, what a game he played last week against Southern Mississippi. He was all over the field. Tim Crowley, the quarterback, the senior on a short drop, and the pass is incomplete on first down. Williams covering, and they go right at Eli Williams, who is making his first defensive start again. Crowley making his first start. 
at quarterback, and he's waited. Uh, well, this is his fourth year at Central Michigan, waiting in the wing, suffered a broken collarbone last year and only played in three games. The give is to the tailback. There are Flowers, and Flowers uh, only a couple of yards. Bo Champ, number 93, there to make the tackle for that Florida Gator defense. And here's Central Michigan's offensive football team. Flowers is the tailback. He's the big story, stepping in for the injured Silas Massey, the number one tailback, out for the season with a torn ACL. Shorman and Allen, outstanding receivers. A look at the offensive lineman. Keep an eye on Ferris. Raleigh Ferris, number 65, is an NFL prospect for Central Michigan. Rally out of the shotgun on third and eight. Down he goes. Javon Kurtz. You didn't see his headshot in the starting lineup, but uh, you should put Peterson and Purse in a box together when you show those starting lineups, Matt. Well, here's here's what the here's what they really wanted to do. They wanted to find more ways to get Javon Curse into the lineup, and they lined him up at the defensive end. And here you see him coming into the backfield, just out quicking the deep, the offensive tackle, using this quickness to get around the end. Good pass rush by Javon Curse. Ben Croft, the kicker. One hopper. And Jamie Richardson trying to find a little running room. A penalty flag is down as Richardson is out of bounds at the 44-yard line. A 45-yard punt by Croft. But there is a flag on the play. Mark Schweitz made the uh, tackle for Central Michigan, but let's check the flag. And it's going to go against the Gators. Steve Furrier already. On the return, on the blue team. So we'll take time out right here on Sunshine Network. They shut down Central Michigan, three plays in a punt. And the next attraction is indeed Rocky Top. They've been talking Tennessee all week here, which uh, you know is always a bit of a distraction when you can't focus on the game at hand. But you got a big one like that coming up. It's tough not to do. As you look at Johnson's numbers from last week, he threw a couple of touchdown passes, also three interceptions in game one. Well, that's the big number there, David. Those three interceptions. Yeah, he's got to make, as you mentioned, better decisions in this one. Fred Taylor, the tailback, Terry Jackson, two outstanding backs behind Johnson, and the receivers we've already talked about. Two offensive lines. We're going to look at both of them in the football game tonight. And Steve Spurrier plans to use them as units. The first pass is caught by Travis McGriff, who did not catch a ball last week against Southern Miss. Doug Johnson gets him going early tonight. Well, David, I think Doug Johnson gets lucky here because uh, once again, the free safety reads it all the way. Herman Smith, and he breaks on the ball, and he just mistimes it as McGriff comes up with the catch. But he read the quarterback eyes all the way and had a good jump on the ball and just misplayed it. That's the thing about Johnson, though. He does have such a strong arm. He puts the ball in uh, places that many others could not get it in. Get rid of that one quickly as Big John McCall, a junior from Troy, Michigan, is there to almost make the sack. A look at Central Michigan's defense. There's Big McCall, 6'3", 272 out of Troy, Michigan. Their linebackers, uh, we've got a twin tandem. Jason Gold, number 41, starts. We'll also see his twin brother, number 44, Jeremy Gold, at a linebacker position. Husband and Williams, inexperienced on the corners. Smith and Sewell are the safeties. Jackson, the fullback. Taylor outrunning the Central Michigan defense inside the 10. And that's what you get from a big man that has blazing speed like Fred Taylor as he's able to get outside, got a key block from Terry Jackson on the linebacker, and he was able to use his speed to get outside and then outrun the defense for a big game. Just good job of walling. Good, good block downfield by the receivers. I mean, everybody doing their job, and that's what they've got to have to open this offense up. Everybody doing their job and counting on each other. That was a 42-yard run by Fred Taylor, who went over 100 yards last week against Southern Miss. Taylor takes a breather as Kerry Jackson is the lone running back. Jamie Richardson. 
Richardson. Doug Johnson put it right on the numbers. Now that was a bullet. You talk about the, the arm strength of Doug Johnson. There we get a great picture of it as Jamie Richardson was just slightly uncovering and he was able to fit the ball into the seam for the easy touchdown. Great, great throw and a tremendous catch by Jamie Richardson. Here we see Duck going back. He's looking at his receiver all the way, and once he spots him, he gets a lot of mustard on the ball as it goes right by the linebacker, not giving him a chance to react. Good route, good catch, and a perfect throw. All right, Jamie Richardson, who caught three passes last week. Doug Johnson with his third touchdown pass of the season. This is Calvin Massenburg, the junior nose tackle, on the field injured, and this is just... Uh, the worst nightmare you can imagine for head coach Dick Flynn. They come in here uh, a huge underdog for the big payday against the Southeastern Conference opponent. And they'll come out with a $350,000 check for coming down here to play in the swamp. But uh, hopefully they'll carry back a healthy football team. And this is not good looking at Massenburg, who was a second team all-conference player last year on the field. Well, he's the, he's the key player for that defense. He's the guy up in the middle that... You know, not only is he big, but he's also quick. He, he stops to run, but he has the ability to get into the backfield and make things happen. Let's take another good look at this touchdown throw by Doug Johnson as you see him looking down the field all the way and then getting the zip on it as Jamie Richardson breaks free for the touchdown. Good news for Richardson and the Gators. You look at the scoring drive, it was quick and painless for everybody except Massenburg who uh, the good news there is he is walking off the field under his own power, so hopefully that is not a serious injury. I think he just got his bell rung. He's, uh, he's able to walk off on his own power. He's limping a little bit, but uh, overall he's healthy. Cooper Collins with the extra point attempt, and it is good. Florida strikes early in the swamp. They're up 7-0 against the Chippewas. Florida Gators have scored quickly. Now that's the Gator offense we've been looking for. The Florida offensive line has gotten some guys back this week as we've talked about. Well, we've not seen them yet. Zach Piller, who injured his ankle rather badly, number 69 on that old line, has not played yet. They'd like to limit his duty, get him a little bit of work, and so far Cooper Carlisle looks to be doing a pretty good job. Reggie Allen brings the ball out to the 20. Wayne Thomas. Makes the special teams play for the Gators. Larry makes reference to the returning Gators. Uh, three of them on the offensive line. That would be Kalick and Piller and Zadalis. Terrace Ross, uh, a tight end. Also back and available. Elijah Williams uh, starting at cornerback. Makes his defensive debut. And Afis Kareem comes off uh, a one-game suspension. And may see some action at the wide receiver spot. gets to Manson. The Chippewas like to run the football. Last week against Northern Illinois, and they won that game 44 to 10, by the way, Crowley completed 12 of 17 passes, and they ran all over the field. Northern Illinois, though, Nat, is ranked dead last uh, in college football in many rankings. Well, they're ranked <laughs> dead last, and of course, Central Michigan looked good last week, but this is no Northern Illinois uh, football team as we see the defensive line come across and stuff that run before it gets started. I wonder when the last time a team played the last place team in college football last rank and then the next week played number one. Pass was incomplete. Intended for Allen, an outstanding receiver, but unable to hold on to that one is Fred Weary. Potential all-conference cornerback out of Jacksonville. Senior makes a nice play. Well, Tim Crowley had uh, a lot of pressure in the pocket, and he really just zips this ball and Never had a chance as the ball was behind the intended receiver, Reggie Allen. Very fortunate the ball was not intercepted. It is struggling to get uh, 11 men on the field. Now they're set. The Crowley will work out of the shotgun on third down. Moten in pursuit. The pass is incomplete. Almost a fine catch by sophomore Damon Pitt. But he didn't hold on in bounds, and Williams doing a good job as. He's been tested early by the Central Michigan offense. 
Well, they've tried to test him, but uh, he stuck, has stood true to the challenges. He does a good job of getting his hands on the on the receiver and then just staying with him, watching the quarterback, <laughs> and they overthrew him. <laughs> Never talked to him about that vertical. A block punt. Terry Jackson clobbered it, and the Gators pick it up and run it in for a touchdown. Jacquez Green picks up the, the football and runs it in. <laughs> now, we talk about all the talent that this football team has. How many teams would have Terry Jackson, your starting fullback, and Jacquez Green, your key receiver, playing special teams? Man, that's some talent, some athleticism. Jackson swallowed the ball whole. And Jackson, or rather Green, picked it up and sprinted in. Sprint it or trot it. Well, <laughs> a trot for Jacquez is a sprint for most everybody else. A flag is down. The line judge coming in. You think there's some pent up frustration being cut loose by this Florida football team tonight? Well, I think they've had a tough week uh, knowing Coach Spurrier and, and and what they really expected. Expected a tough game last week, but they didn't expect it to be that tough. So they've had a tough week of practice. And uh, I'm pretty sure that they want to show the coach they're ready and they'd like to have a more relaxed practice next week. Two weeks before the next showdown against the Tennessee Volunteers here in Gainesville on September 20th. The extra point is good. And the Gators are up early. We've played less than four minutes. And it's 14 to nothing Florida as Terry Jackson blocked a punt. His second career punt block, and they both resulted in touchdowns for the Gators. We'll be back to the swamp in a moment. The so weekly against Central Michigan tonight. And, and the real key, David, is that they were porous on offense, they were porous on special teams, and already they've routed, righted those wrongs offensively and special teams wise. Here is Allen again from the four. And there is John X Ninus to make the tackle for the Florida Gators. A 16-yard return. Let's take another look at the block. You'll see Terry Jackson come right in the middle of your pitcher there as he comes straight up the middle and almost takes the ball off of the kicker's foot. And Jacquez Green does a good job of picking it up and just turning up field. Jacquez Green can find a lot of ways to score points for you. Michigan still trying to run the ball up the middle of Florida's defense. Running right into the strength of that defensive unit. Willie Cohens was there that time, the junior from Stark, to make the tackle. And there's Johnny Rutledge, the junior from Belglade, also in on the stop for the Gators. Well, the strong two of this Chippewa football team is their offensive line, but the Gator defense is also the strong two of this Florida football team. And Florida's defensive line is controlling the line of scrimmage so far. Central Michigan has produced some outstanding offensive linemen. A short drop and a quick toss, and Shoreman makes the catch with Eli Williams covering him. Short of a first down at the 28. What the Gators have been doing so far, they're stepping everybody up their seven-man front and daring this Chippewa football team to throw the football, and they answered them with a quick slant, but not enough for the first down. In motion. Bobby's pass is point. And that will be a Chippewa first down. The pass was caught by the tight end, Adam Simonson, the junior from Sturgis, Michigan. And that was a good throw and catch by Crowley and Simonson because Wayne Thomas was all over the tight end. So this is a terrific catch by the tight end, Adam Simonson, as he's covered. Was able to come up with the big, big, big grab. Simons had caught six last week against Northern Illinois. The Chippewa leading receiver a week ago. Crowley airing it out. Two Gator defenders there, and the pass is overthrown. Eli Williams step for step with Reggie Allen. 
One of the things that you get when you bring Eli William to the other side of the football is a guy that has tremendous speed and quickness as well, and he does a tremendous job of running with their speed receiver step by step, but if he's not able to, there's that man again, Kiko Brown, in perfect position to help out. What a statement about your football team. You move the number seven rusher in, in your school's history to the defensive side of the ball in his senior year. Flowers is shut down again. Derek Chambers, the redshirt freshman from Lawndale, North Carolina. Number 91 was there to make the tackle. But Williams is not a stranger to, uh, to playing defensive football. He was an outstanding defensive back. If we look at the stuff by Chambers again, Williams was an outstanding DB at Milton uh, High School as a junior. I think he switched offense uh, in his senior year of high school, but was really a top defensive prospect as a junior. Well, he came in here expecting to be a defensive back, and they gave him opportunity to move to the other side of the ball, giving him a chance to play. And in doing so, uh, he played for three years, but now there's an opportunity to play full-time playing defense. As once again, we see Elijah Williams coming up on the quick screen, making a play. And he really, in talking with him earlier this year, David, he, he felt that coming back on defense, that playing offense was going to really help him. And there you see him reading the play, knowing what the offense is trying to do to him, so he's able to react a lot sooner. Croft gets this one away, and Wes Green makes the fair catch at the 37-yard line. And that's where Florida will put the ball in play. They've had only one offensive series. And the Gators marched 68 yards behind sophomore Doug Johnson. Four plays later in the end zone. The other seven points coming on a block punt by Terry Jackson. Jock Wes Green picked it up, ran it in for the score, and it's 14-0 Florida. Johnson, the dual sport athlete. Throwing on first down. Jackson spins from the defender. Jackson to the 50. Jason Gold, number 41, a junior from Belleville, Michigan, is there to make the tackle. Or, or David, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, Doug Johnson has caught a lot of heat. But we'll look at the zip on this ball. You On the flat pass, in the past, we've looked at the ball getting out there. Danny Werfel putting the ball on the money, but it doesn't get there in such a hurry. The ball gets there in such a hurry that Terry Jackson has a chance to catch the ball, turn up field, square up on the defender, and make something happen. Johnson's got Jackson all alone. Terry Jackson waltzes in for the third touchdown of the first quarter for the Gators. And I think we see the emergency of Doug Johnson as he's settled down. He's reading the defense and going to the open guy. As the safety split, he saw Terry Jackson going through the middle of the field, and he was able to hit him. And between the two linebackers, Jerome Winston and Jeremy Gold. Just a perfect read by Doug Johnson as he zips it in to Terry Jackson for the touchdown. 50 yards on the play. Jackson, his second touchdown reception for the Gators in his career. And the extra point is good again. The Gators are up now 21 to nothing. With seven minutes, 28 seconds still to play in the first quarter of the football game. And Steve Spurrier has to be feeling a little bit better about his offense right about now. We'll take a break and be back on Sunshine Network in just a moment. Like it. The Gators 21, Central Michigan nothing. Halfway through the first quarter from the swamp. Bobby Stevenson kicking off again. Reggie Allen a yard deep. Allen a little crack there at the 20. Is brought down at the 25 yard line. But Doug Johnson really throwing the ball nicely tonight. Well, but even more so than just throwing the ball nicely. He's putting air on it when he needs to. He's zipping it, but he's reading the defense. The safety split, he knew right away that he had his fullback going through the middle, isolated on the linebacker, and they're not going to win that battle. Johnson and Jackson make it look easy. The Gators have had two scoring drives, a total of six plays. Trying to run outside. Flowers is still 
it up. That is a big time hit by Keith Kelsey, the sophomore from Newberry. Hit him right on the shoulder pad. Well, this defensive football team of the Florida Gators just has tremendous speed. And here you see him trying to pitch it and get him outside. But Keith Kelsey and the entire defense, as we see Mike Moten even outside there, there's no way to get outside because this team has tremendous lateral quickness. Kelsey's got a lot of speed. Another very talented player that is not in the starting lineup for the Gators, but he's going to get a lot of snaps. Panthers batted down at the line of scrimmage. Mike Moten, a 6'5 senior, leased up and tipped it away. Well, this guy has really come a long way, not just as a football player, but personally as well. He's had a spiritual awakening, has really settled down. I think he's going to have a great senior year. Well, this, this is the time for him to step up and be counted with Reggie McGrew being uh, down for three or four weeks. You know, he can be a big plus for this football team, and so far today, he's doing a tremendous job. Central Michigan, again, third down. Riley's pass off the shoulder pads of the receiver, Shorman, and almost intercepted. Mike Harris trying to dive and make the grab, but could not. And the Chippewas have to punt the ball again. I tell you, it's amazing what Bobby Stoops has done with this defense in just two years where everybody's on the same page. They're all sitting back there. They've got great vision reading the quarterback. And Mike Harris almost came up with a big play because he was reading the, deep, the offense and broke on the ball. Got a good jump on the football. Brock really hammers this one. Jack West Green backpedaling to his 24. Now look out as he gets to the outside. He's gone, but... A nice touchdown saving tackle is made by Burke Maxwell, the junior from Rocky Ford, Colorado, number 36, after an 18-yard return by Quez Green. Well, the beautiful thing about Jacquez's return here, and, and for you young punt returners at home, look at what he does. He doesn't turn on the speed until he knows it's time to give it all, give it all you got. He's reading his blockers, then he turns up field and uses his speed. A lot of ability, but also good football instincts. Jacquez Green. Johnson play action. He's got another wide open receiver. He is just picking the Chippewas apart as Jamie Richardson is there to make the catch at the 35-yard line. Let's go to the sideline. Larry Vitell. Larry? Well, David, we talked earlier about three offensive linemen being back for the Florida Gators. They're putting that to use right now. Florida has Ryan Kalick, Corey Yarber, Zach Sedalis, and Scott Bryan all in the ball game. The second offensive line is designed, is out there doing the job for the Gator offense. Jackson, a little delay to the 30. Jerome Winston, number 18, a sophomore from Lansing, Michigan, makes the tackle for the Chippewa. And I think that uh, Jimmy Ray Stevens, the offensive line coach, Steve Spurrier, feel like there are 10, if not 11, pretty good offensive linemen out there, and there's not a whole lot of difference in uh, unit one and unit number two. Well, if you look at the experience of all these guys, they've all played a lot. They all played last year as freshmen and sophomores, and it doesn't matter who's in there, they're going to get the job done. Everybody back, everybody healthy on that offensive line. Triple line kind of the blitz, and the Gators have the right play call. Fred Taylor. Bangs it to the 15. Herman Smith, number 10. A sophomore from Flint. Good blocking up front by that offensive line. Uh, it sort of startled Fred Taylor because he didn't expect to have such a big hole. And he jumped out there and there was nobody to run over or run around. He can't figure out whether he should go north or south or east or west. Good blocking by that big offensive line of the Florida Gators. Now, Peace Kareem has checked in. Johnson drops the throw. Pressure for the first time tonight. Tip toes away from the defender, and the pass is almost picked off. Sean Williams, a junior from Baldwin, Michigan, just about had the INT. Well, we dodged a bullet that time, and Joe Adams was the guy that was causing all the havoc in the pocket. As we see Doug Johnson trying to break loose, he does a good job of avoiding the sack. But here, he's just got to get rid of the football, throw it out of bounds. You cannot throw it up for grabs. And Sean Williams come close to coming up with the interception. There you, there you see, he knows that he made a mistake. He's talking to Coach first, and uh, Coach, that's another mistake. I'm going to get that corrected. Perhaps another case where Doug felt like 
with his great arm, he could just force the ball in there. And there's a pass uh, without living in the pass too much that Danny Werfel made famous for the Florida Gators. That fade into the corner of the end zone that Doug Johnson just has not quite perfected. Well, that's that's something that will come with time. What happens when you're a quarterback with a strong arm? You always feel that you can gun it in. And the problem with that is that if you're lining it in and you're a little off, you doesn't you don't give your receivers a chance to help you out by running underneath it. And that's what Danny Werfel did a better job of. Gators look at a third down play. Short drop. Johnson trying that fade again. Nicely thrown, and it's six for the Gators. Jacquez Green, the cornerback, Jason Husband, turned his head, and you don't want to do that with Quezzy. Well, Jason Husband really didn't even get a chance to turn his head because Quezzy did such a great job of decoying him that he didn't even know that the ball was there until Quezzy reached up and just picked it out of the air. Just a perfect, perfect throw and catch by Doug Johnson and Jacquez Green. Tremendous job of decoying the defender, showing that experience that uh, Green has. Doug Johnson looking very sharp in the first quarter. And another extra point by Cooper is good. He's four for four in the first quarter. Everybody's getting in on the action as the Gators have taken a 28 to nothing lead. Another short but effective drive by Doug Johnson and the Florida Gator offense. tonight in the swap against Central Michigan at 28 to nothing. Bobby Stevenson, his fifth kickoff in the first quarter. And the Chippewas will bring it out to this one. Let's check with Larry Vitell on the field. Larry? Okay, David, one thing this game is doing already is giving the Florida Gators a chance to rest Ed Chester. Ed is a tremendous defensive lineman, but he had a pin removed from his foot football about two weeks before two-a-days and hasn't had a lot of practice. The foot has bothered him a little bit off and on, so they're going to keep him out pretty much the rest of the way if they can. Buck Gurley has moved into tackle, and he's going to get a lot of playing time along with Derek Chambers and Gerard Warren. Well, I think you can go down the line, Larry. The third and fourth teamers, their palms are sweating right now because they know there's a great chance they're going to get a lot of snaps in this one. It's 28 to nothing in the first quarter. Tony George just made a fine play, stepping in front of the receiver and knocking it away. Good job of reading the route all the way as he's with Reggie Allen. And just as the ball arrives, he's able to step in front of him and swat it away. And you're talking uh, during the last break about the job Gator receivers do on his fade route. Well, and that's a credit to Coach Dwayne Dixon. He does just a tremendous job of teaching his receivers not to show that the ball is coming until it gets there. And then they just reach up and pluck it out of the air like an apple. The running room for Flowers. He's in the open field. And is brought down at the 34. Kiko Brown. Number 33 for the Gators. There to make the tackle. Brown had a big game last week against Southern Mississippi. Had an interception. About four broken up passes. Three or four tackles. He's a playmaker back there. And that's the kind of guy you like in that free safety spot. Down for the Chippewas. Riley throwing it deep. He's got a man out there, and it is doubled and then caught a beautiful circus catch by Reggie Allen. Well, that was just a, a, a great catch by Reggie Allen because Fred Ware was with him all the way, jumped up and swatted the ball away. Good job of maintaining his concentration by Reggie Allen as when the ball has popped up, he's able to relocate it and come down with the grass. This is just a great individual effort as you see two guys fighting for the football and Reggie Allen comes away as he maintains concentration. Allen, a first team all Mac player last year. He caught 66 passes last season. Had just one catch last week against Northern Illinois. The flag goes down as Flowers stays on his feet and carries the ball to the 16. So the Chippewas began to get a little offense generated here late in the first quarter. And I think the key is they're able to move the ball up the middle of the field as they start to work against some of the young guys. Number 61, we've got uh, 
Gerald Ward and Buck Gurley in there at the uh, tackle position. That's where they're starting to run. That's where that team likes to run the football up the middle. Chippewas declining the penalty. It'll be second down and three. Coach Dick Flynn, who's been at Central Michigan for 20 seasons as an assistant coach first behind Herb Duramity, who is now the athletic director at Central Michigan. Now Flynn in his fourth year as head coach of the Chippewas. Simonson cannot hold on to big tight end. Jelan Kirst gave him a pop just as the ball arrived. The Central Michigan football program has a lot of tradition. Well, they've had uh, tremendous success through the years. They were the Mid-American Conference champions in Flynn's first season as head coach four years ago. There we see the Central Michigan team, David, trying to take a page out of the Southern Mississippi book as they put a little kick play in for the tight end, but just weren't successful. The ball's just off the tight end, Simonson's fingertips. Chippewa's first offensive threat of the game. Bochamp runs down the quarterback. Now that's something when you got a 6'2", 262-pound lineman coming across the field and running down a quarterback. Bochamp has got great speed. Well, that's 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 a big factor for this Gator football team is that not only do the linebackers have tremendous speed, but all of these defensive ends as well as the tackles can run. To see a big man motoring like that, that's got to be frightening for a quarterback. Man, Bochamp Jr. out of New Smyrna Beach. Made the big play to force the field goal try. Casey Wilson, a senior. And a try one from 40 yards out to kick in the air. Plenty of distance, and the kick is good. And the Chippewas are on the scoreboard with two minutes and seven seconds to play in the first quarter. Wilson. Out of Anaheim, California. The senior. Now eight out of 14. Junior college transfer. Eight out of 14 now. Field goal attempts with the Chippewas. And there will be no shutout tonight at the Swamp. Central Michigan is on the scoreboard. Well, but once again, as you get down into that green territory, the Gator defense sort of bow their backs and they start to push you back, forcing you to settle for the field goal or to take the football away. This time they force them to settle for the field goal try. Shell out crowd on a beautiful evening. Temperature in the mid-80s at kickoff time. Going to drop into the 70s, probably hit about 70 degrees by the end of the game. Just a perfect night for football here in North Central Florida. Great football weather. Now, the kind of weather that an old man like me could even play in. We can appreciate this, can't we? These fans uh, are frustrated, but I think patient. I think uh, Florida fans generally did not expect tremendous things offensively from this team early in the season. It's just that with Tennessee looming so close on the schedule, there is a sense of urgency to get something going offensively. And you see Steve Spurrier and his offense begin to click tonight. I think uh, folks are going to be feeling a little bit better about this team after this ball game. Well, when you look at that Florida schedule, the first thing you look at, the first date you mark, is September 20th when Tennessee come to town. So you can understand why they would be a little excited about trying to get this offense motivated and headed in the right direction. That's Terry Jackson on the short kick return. And the Gators will have the ball at their 30-yard line. Doug Johnson. Working at Florida offense. The offense has scored three touchdowns in the first quarter. The defense, or I should say the special team, scored the fourth touchdown on a blocked punt by Terry Jackson. Johnson now has the freshman, both Carroll. Behind him at tailback. Redshirt freshman Rod Frazier at fullback. He's there and out for Quest Green again. A beautiful throw, and Green has made the catch at the 21. Well, once again, we see the arm strength of Doug Johnson as he's able to get it out there as Jacquez Green takes off on a streak down the left sideline, comes up with the catch. So we got a flag back at the line of scrimmage. And this one is coming back.
Well, this play will be nullified, David, but uh, this is what the Gator fans are used to seeing. It the bomb. The receiver downfield. The tight end was covered on the offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. And usually if you have that problem, that's be, that means the receiver forgot to step back off the ball. And from the side that it was thrown, that could have went against Jacquez Green as he, was, he knew they were calling his number and he wanted to make the play. First down from the 25. Bo Carroll, freshman from Norristown, Pennsylvania. Carroll with sprinter speed is knocked out of bounds at the 48-yard line. And David, we, when we look at this Central Michigan football team, you can tell that they're not used to playing against a team with this kind of speed as every time they go to take a pursuit angle, they take the wrong angle, and these speedy receivers and running backs for the Gators just outrun them and turn the corner, as you see Carroll turning the corner there. Brian Ligib, a freshman, saved the touchdown there for the Chippewas. Carroll, an electrifying runner. And the Gators first down at the 48. and threading the needle to the tight end Aaron Kenny at the 36 of the Chippewas. Well, I think Aaron Kenny has got the confidence of not only Doug Johnson, but Steve Spurrier because the tight end is back in the offense as you see him going down the middle of the field and the ball goes to Aaron, Aaron Kenny over the middle of the field. Something that we don't normally see with this Gator offense. You got those great receivers. They usually get the ball, but this big tight end at 6'6", 266 pounds, has proven that he can catch the football as well as block. Kenny had three catches last week against the Southern Miss. Johnson going for Kenny again. A big fella hold on. Ligon hit him pretty hard there at the 15, but Aaron Kenny managed to hold on to the football. I think we're starting to see where Doug Johnson liked that little sharp pass to the tight end going through the middle, especially when you got a big target like Kenny at 6'6", who can take the blow while receiving the football. Kenny, a big sophomore from Ashland, Virginia, making his mark early in this season for the Florida Gators offensively. Johnson throws a bullet, Nafis Kareem. Makes his first catch of the season. He served a one-game suspension last week. So Kareem gets in on the action. The ball is going to be spotted at about the 13. Ralph Sewell, a freshman from Detroit, Michigan, number 26, there to make the tackle. And we'll be right back to the swamp at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. And Steve Spurrier has to like what he's seen from his football team so far. They lead Central Michigan 28-3. to Doug Johnson has been... Uh, very sharp. He made one questionable decision on a pressure situation, but other than that, Nat, has really seemed to settle down here tonight. Well, he's done a good job of just taking what the defense gives him, and uh, at one point he panicked and went back to what you expect from young guys, but he's doing a better job of handling the offense today. Terrace Ross has checked in at tight end as Johnson checks off at the line of scrimmage. And he calls a good play. That's Rod Frazier. Frazier got in for the touchdown. The brother of Tommy, the Nebraska quarterback, had six points on the board for the Florida Gators. Another good job of reading what the defense is doing to him. They come with the blitz. He knows that he has Rod Frazier open in the flat. He doesn't look downfield. He goes to him right away, giving him a chance to catch the ball and get turned upfield. But you see the linebacker hurtling Bo Carroll. Frazier does a good job catching the football first, putting the move on, and then stretching out to get the touchdown. Now, Frazier is expected to do mostly blocking from his fullback position when he's in the game. He got a chance to put his hands on the ball for the first time and made the most of it. Well, all the fullbacks, including Rod Frazier, very happy that Terry Jackson is now fullback because they are in the offense other than blockers. Allen Cooper, another extra point. It's 35-3. to three. And the Florida Gators are rolling over their opponent from the Mid-American Conference here in the Swamp. <laughs> 
second quarter from the swamp we're early in the second quarter and the Gators have that huge lead against the Chippewas let's go to the sideline of Larry Vitello all right thanks a lot David with me James Jones the Gators didn't play a great game last Saturday the coach was very critical how do you think they've responded I tell you what looking at 35 points in about 15 minutes I think that's a good response James is a player how do you feel when the coach really lets you have it not only privately but publicly well you feel very little when he come out publicly about it but if you have this kind of response you don't mind getting criticized like that every week okay David all right Robbie Stevenson kicking off again a Reggie Allen been a busy return man for the Chippewas John X Nitus was there to stop him at the 23. another effective uh, short but effective scoring drive by the Gators only five plays to move 70 yards in two minutes and 16 seconds Florida has been clicking on all cylinders offensively here tonight I would say that they once again look like the fun and gun offense that we've been accustomed to the tailback is flowers and flowers gets the handoff he moves into the starting tailback spot because of the season ending injury to Silas Massey who really was an outstanding player towards ACL three days before the season opener last week uh, against Northern Illinois. But uh, Massey, the former number one tailback, ran for a thousand yards in his freshman year after he filled in for an injured tailback midway through the season. Massey got a thousand yards in only six games. Now Flowers is the guy that is filling in for Massey who has the knee injury. And Flowers carried for 127 yards last week against Northern Illinois. So they are pretty well stocked at the tailback position at Central Michigan. Well, that, that says one thing. That says that they've got a great offensive line, that they don't care who they put back their tailback. They're going to open some holes and give these guys a chance to run. As we see that Crowley tries to go downfield to Scorman, and Elijah Williams is running with him step by step. You know, in reading uh, about Flowers and Nance, the two tailbacks, Apparently both of those guys uh, that we're seeing here tonight are kind of the, the type of backs that like to run over you rather than, than run around you and have the great speed. Massey was the jitterbug type tailback and these other two guys are more power backs and I had a feeling that might not bode too well for Central Michigan against this Florida defense. Not, not against these big guys, big strong guys that uh, really push the offensive lineman back and not give him anywhere to run. So, you know, you've got to be able to run around these guys, and if you don't have the quickness, the lateral quickness, you're not going to be able to do so. Well, we might see, as uh, you see the pass go incomplete intended for Allen, we might see the freshman, the only Floridian on the Central Michigan team, Dan Myrick, before the night is over with. He's out of Sarasota Riverview, and he's got a little bit more speed and a few more moves than the other two tailbacks that we've seen. The punt by Croft is going to Late arrest at about the 38-yard line, a 39-yard punt. Florida's defense again does the job, and the offense comes back uh, onto the field, leading 35-3. to The Florida Gators ranked number one in one of the major polls and number two in the other. There we see a future Gator and taking in the game, enjoying the afternoon. I have not seen so many fans so early arriving to the stadium as I saw last week for the Southern Mississippi game in a long, long time, if ever. I think that was a perfect indication of coming off the national championship here. You, you want to get started. You want to get cranked up in a hurry as we see you, Eugene McCaslin doing a lot on his own after he got outside running over would-be tacklers, picking up extra yardage as Herman Smith finally brings it down after the game for the first down. Haslam says, uh, Give me a chance to show what I can do also. He's another quality running back in Steve Spurrier's stable of tailbacks. And, and that's what's tough about it, isn't it? You're sitting there, you know that you've got talent, you've got a guy like Fred Taylor in front of you, you got a guy like Bo Carroll pushing you, and it's hard to get on the field. I could understand why Elijah Williams said, put me on defense. Williams has no problem moving to the defensive side of the ball. Johnson again, finding the open man, the feast Kareem. The second catch of the night at the 32 of the Chippewas. To show you the maturity of uh, Doug Johnson, that time he was being pressured, knew he was going to get hit, stayed in there and made a good, strong throw to Nafis Kareem for the, the uh, completion. Florida Gators threatening to score again early in the second quarter and already leading 35-3. Daryl Jackson has checked in at one wideout spot. He's in the slot on the right side. 
Johnson for Green. He's open. The ball hit the defender in the helmet. Herman Smith didn't know where the football was, but he did uh, as soon as it hit him right in the back of the head. Well, he had him open for a split second, but the Chippewas got lucky as Herman Smith goes running down the field, and all he's trying to do is face guard Green because, you know, he knows he's beat, and he's just hoping to do anything to keep him from catching the football, and the ball hits him right in the back. Second down and 10. Draw play to McCaslin, a nice block by the fullback. Jackson sprung him for an extra five or 10. And McCaslin to the 20. Jeremy Gold, the twin brother of Jason Gold. Jeremy wears number 44, his twin brother, identical twin brother, Jason wears number 41. Well, here's a good look at, at what this is. You see Jackson making that big block, giving McCaslin good room to run upfield. Picking up another Gator first down. Racking him up, racking up the yardage in the first half here at the Swamp. Close to 300 yards in total offense already. Blitz on by the Chippewas, and the pass is incomplete. Johnson had a little time to go through his options and he quickly tried to dump the ball to the tight end well he tried to get it to the tight end but I'm, I'm seeing more and more maturity every play because he knows he's going to get hit and he's holding the ball at extra second trying to give his receiver a chance to unclear impressive numbers by Johnson in the first half Dump pass to the fullback, Terry Jackson. Jackson looking for a block. Green gives it to him with an escort to the end zone. Good job of running after the catch by Terry Jackson, but even a better job by his downfield blockers as he had offensive linemen getting down in front of the screen as well as coming back, picking up Jacquez Green's block to get him into the end zone. Great execution by that entire Gator offensive football team. Doug Johnson starts it all by suckering the defensive line in. As you see, the offensive line giving him room to get in there. And then big Zach Zadehas, Zadelis, crazy with a good block. Just great execution by that entire football team up front. Alex Cooper adds his sixth extra point of the game. So the Gators lead 42 to three, a big night for Doug Johnson and the Gator offense. Set the number one ranked team in the country, but that score this early in the game has to be at least a little bit shocking, I think, especially now more when you consider what the Gators did last week in their opener offensively. Well, I think you expect the Florida Gators to come in and play well offensively, but you didn't expect them to turn it on so early. And this, is, this will give Tennessee something to think about, especially when they look at the film. They might say that the Central Michigan team is not that good, but the different ways that the Gators are scoring will give them a lot to think about when they're putting their defensive scheme together. Well, it doesn't matter whether he's got the wind at his back or in his face. Robbie Stevenson's doing a fine job on kickoffs. He just nailed that one through the end zone. Here we take another look at it. You see exactly what Doug Johnson sees. And then you see big Zach Sedalis out front. Corey Yalborough. And then look at this block by Jaquez Green as he walls off to the, the defender, excuse me, to get uh, Terry Jackson into the end zone. Terry Jackson is putting up the kind of numbers tonight that are uh, going to get him consideration for player of the week honors. He's already scored two touchdowns. He's blocked the punt. And we haven't even played a quarter and a half here at Florida Field. Now the Chippewas came in here perhaps not thinking they could win the game, but you know Dick Flynn and his staff thought that they could at least be competitive, especially with what Southern Mississippi was able to do last week here at Florida Field. This game was scheduled back in 1992 when this Chippewa program had just come off uh, a big win against Michigan State. Uh, these games are scheduled so far out in advance. You never know what kind of football team really you're going to be bringing into a place like this. But uh, came here for the big payday and with the hopes that they could stay on the field with the Florida Gators. But so far that has just not happened. They're going to give Shorman the catch, it looks like, there at the 28-yard line is Tyrone Baker, who started at that left corner position for the Gators last week due to the suspension of Eli Williams. 
It was Baker there to make the tackle. They've been able to go to Sherman twice on the slant route. You know, he's a possession receiver that uh, if you start to come up, he'll go by you. He caught a couple big balls deep last week, but he's molded for his possession reception. Big hit by Willie Rogers on Flowers, the tailback for the Chippewas. It'll be close to, it looks like he is going to be a first down. Well, the Gator volleyball team returns home to host the University of... I'm not sure who exactly that is. I don't have that on the sheet here. They face Brigham Young. That's who it is. And the first 500 fans at the match hit Gator Volleyball Cups. On Saturday, Florida plays Kent. That'll be at noon, followed by a 7 p.m. battle with the powerful Louisville Cardinals. Tickets are $2 for adults, and you have students and youth 17 and under are admitted free. On first down, the Chippewas... Going again to the tailback, Eric Flowers, trying to run up the middle mostly with that power tailback. But uh, their offensive line just cannot deal with Florida's front seven. Well, the, the, the front four is doing a great job of keeping everybody off the linebackers, and the linebackers are reading and flowing. They're running all these cross blocks where they're trying to get angle blocking to, to move these big guys out of there. But the linebackers are stepping up in there and filling it, not letting them create a seam. From the 31. Crowley under pressure, had the ball batted, and it falls incomplete. Javon Kurse, Tim Bochamp both came crashing in there to put pressure on the quarterback. Well, one thing you teach your guys is that you go as far as you can, and when the quarterback sets to throw the football, you want to get your hands up. As we see, Tim Bochamp gets his hands up and swaps the ball down. Tim Crowley, the senior from Jackson, Michigan, is having a tough night. Crowley got hammered as the ball is thrown incomplete. He got hit simultaneously by three Gator defenders, Rogers, Bochamp, and Kurse, and they all came caving in on the quarterback, it'll be fourth down. Watch Crowley and the pressure that he's going to get from the Gators. Well, that's when you say as a quarterback, is anybody blocking? Ouch. Gators have the rush on. Croft gets it away. Jamie Richardson from the 28. Richardson to the 40. 43-yard punt. About a 10-yard return by Jamie Richardson. Richardson out of the return. Sophomore out of Tallahassee. Not by Jefferson. Young man that's had some difficulty. And got his first opportunity last week. Came up big with three receptions for 54 yards and a touchdown. And has carried it over into this ball game. So, David, this is a guy that uh, we're all pulling for. We'd like to see him uh, go through the rest of his career and show the the talent and the promise that the Gators felt they had when they recruited him out of uh, Tallahassee. Outstanding athlete at Godby High School. Doug Johnson back in at quarterback. Stepping up in the pocket nicely. Got well green. Cannot stretch out and make the catch at the 10-yard line. Nice idea by Johnson and Green. Jamel Jefferson was the guy trying to catch up to Green, but uh, well, that is a tough task. Green had about five yards separated between himself and the defender. Well, here you see Doug stepping up, and he just launches this ball, and very seldom do you see a quarterback with enough arm strength to overthrow Jacquez Green, but there you see the arm strength of Doug Johnson as he's slightly over the outstretched arms of Jacquez. Nice hit by the linebacker. Jason Gold stepped up into the gap, drove back Fred Taylor. By Haven't been many solid hits uh, on Florida running backs tonight by the Chippewas, but that was one. That was one, and uh, the offensive line has been doing a good job of clearing everybody out of there, and I think that was a play where the Chippewas took the, the play off. It just happened to still be in the hole because they weren't pass rushing. The Gators have not punted the ball yet in the game. 8.30 to go in the second quarter. Here's third and nine. The grip all alone. 
Travis McGriff to the 40. Charlie Bush, the linebacker, made the tackle, but the, the corner of the safety, somebody, I think the corner over on that side, got completely turned around by McGriff. Well, McGriff reads the coverage. It's a zone defense. He does a good job of getting his allotted depth, coming back, sitting down in the hole, coming back to meet the football, then turning back upfield. And that's what you've got to be able to do. Recognize when it's zone, when it's man, whether you run a zone route, find the opening, or if it's man, you're running a route, an individual route on the man coverage. Taylor, nowhere to go. John McCall, the junior from Troy. Number 92 there to make the tackle. It's kind of hard to run a draw when you don't have a pass rush. And Florida came with the draw. The defensive line is still sitting there because they're not getting across the line of scrimmage. There was nowhere for Fred Taylor to run. Doug Johnson, you look at McCall, the big fella. Johnson has already thrown five touchdown passes tonight. Connecting again with Jamie Richardson. Richardson slipping tacklers inside the 25. Husband, the senior from Lansing, keeps him out of the end zone. Well, this time we catch him. They're sitting in a man coverage. Richardson realizes he's got man coverage. He runs it off of his guy, beats number 22. Jamel Jefferson turns up field and is almost able to split him for the touch. Well, the Gators pick up another first down from the Chippewa 23. And it was time call before the flag. Nope. Call before the snap. The way again. On the offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. That'll back it up to the 28. Backup quarterback Noah Brendice. Freshman Jesse Palmer standing on the sideline close to the head coach. They got a notion tonight that they might see some action. Well, if I'm Jesse Palmer, I'm hoping that uh, the score is 50 to 3 at halftime so the fourth quarter I get some playing time. Johnson looking for the end zone again. He's got Richardson again. Richardson walks to the end of the end zone. Now that was just a beautiful thrown ball by Doug Johnson because as Jamie Richardson broke out to the corner route, he threw it up and over the Wolfie defender. Perfect throw, giving him time to turn and locate the football. Easy catch and run for the touchdown. Just a great throw. They pick up the blitz. Good job by Fred Taylor picking up the blitzer. Beautiful throw. Easy catch. Touchdown. Doug Johnson, six touchdown passes tonight. The school record is seven. Held by Terry Dean in a game against New Mexico State in 1994. Johnson has six touchdown tosses in this one. Seven for seven in the extra point department now. Collins Cooper, the junior from Jacksonville, drills another one through. And the Florida Gators, ranked number one in the country, looking good offensively tonight. Doing to pour it on here in the swamp tonight. A game this team desperately needed. Again, it's offensive confidence after struggling last week in the opener against Southern Mississippi. It is 49 to 3. Bobby Stevenson again kicking it deep. Reggie get to the outside. And down he goes near the 20. Eugene McCaslin was the first man there. Let's take another look at touchdown number seven for the Gators tonight. And this is what you like to see if you're Steve Spur. You're starting to see the young man mature as he knows he's got a guy breaking wide open and he puts some air on it instead of trying to line it in. Join Sunshine Network every Sunday at noon for Florida football highlights with Steve Spurrier. Tune in as Coach Spurrier reviews the week's game and looks ahead to the Gators' next opponent. Florida football highlights with Steve Spurrier. That's Sundays at noon on Sunshine. And that next opponent in this case is... Tennessee Volunteers, ranked number three in the country. Willie Cohens makes the stop on Eric Flowers. Cohens, big junior out of Stark, played at Bradford County High School now, really coming into his own. Listen to the head popping down there. That is a physical Florida defense. 
very physical defense and and what's really tough for this Central Michigan football team is they don't have the speed to get outside and the feet cannot get up field on them. All of that, Shorman trying to run the distance, but he's brought down from behind by Mike Harris. Ryan Shorman, who caught 53 passes last year, had quite a one-two punch with Shorman on one side now and on the other. Well, that, that, that shows you that you don't have to be a speedster. All you've got to do is split the seam and get the ball in rhythm, and there we see Shorman off to the races, and it takes Mike Harris coming from behind to bring him down. Shorman, 86, came into the game with 94 career receptions. The guy on the other side, Reggie Allen, came in with 82 career receptions, so he got a lot of, a lot of experience at that wide receiver position. But they have not been able to run the football at all against the Gators tonight. Mike Peterson, junior from Alachua, Stop by Peterson. came up to make the stop. I think their, their, their philosophy has got to be that this is what we do, and you know, we're not just going to try and get ready to play the Gators. We've got the, the conference coming up, and we're going to continue to do what we do best. And they continue to run it up in there as Bobby Stoops looking on. He's putting his defense in the perfect situation for guys to make plays. Well, a year ago, Central Michigan played Virginia. The pass is incomplete. Ronnie Battle got uh, his feet tangled up with the receiver a little bit. He's looking for a flag. As a defender, what you want to do is get good position, and Ronnie Battle is in great position as he sees the ball thrown. He's going for it, trying to get the pick, forcing the receiver to run up his back or to go through him to get to the football. Well, the Chippewas played Virginia last year, and uh, that Virginia team had four players taken in the first five rounds of the NFL draft. And it was a 55 to 21 score. Central Michigan had uh, over 400 yards in offense against the Cavaliers. But they have had nowhere near that type of uh, success tonight against Florida. And you got to think coming in here, David, not only are they looking at the big payday, but they also feel that if they play tough competition, it should help them when they go back into the Mid American Conference when they're playing for the conference championship. If they don't get anybody hurt. Well, they got leveled as he threw the ball, it is incomplete. Mike Peterson was the man who came in from his uh, linebacker's side pass. And the Chippewas will punt the football. Another look at Mike Peterson coming in, boarding the, the block. And you, know, you have to give this kid Crowley a lot of credit. He's standing in there taking the blows. You know, and a lot of courage. Well, he's waited a long time to get the chance to quarterback this football team. Is glad he stuck with it. What are you doing there? Now a senior. Croft back to punt. Jacquez Green standing deep. And Croft is uh, not going to give Jacquez a chance to return this one. It kicks into the end zone, and Farnham will have the ball at the Gator 20 yard line with four minutes, three seconds to play in the second quarter. Croft has been a busy young man out there punting the ball for Central Michigan tonight. Busy young man that uh, eventually says that I'd rather just kick it in the end zone, let him start the 20 rather than try and hang it up and maybe have him run it back down our throat. So he booted it in there and they weren't able to get down and down it. And anytime you can pin the Gators back and force them to go 80 yards, that's can start for them to get into a great field position this entire ball game. Gators have 49 points with four minutes still to play in the first half. Here for playing on an empty field. That's a remarkable offensive output. That pass should have been intercepted by Ryan Liggett, but he could not hold on at about the 45. Uh, as Coach Shula used to say, it hit him in a bad spot, right, right in the hands, and he wasn't expecting it. Just one of those balls that sailed on him. He's trying to get the ball to Jamie Richardson going through the middle. And that's what that's one of the other things that happen when you got that strong arm. The ball has a tendency to the sail, especially throwing into the wind the way he is. Flag at 29, a freshman, a true freshman out of Midland, Michigan. Johnson has not made many mistakes tonight. Another pass on target. Jacques Green, only his second reception. And uh, I think that says a lot that the Gators have 49 points and only two receptions by Jacques Green. 
Well, last week we had two receivers that uh, caught balls and only three receivers that actually played any length of time. And today they've decided to open it up and we're getting, getting a good look at some of the other young receivers that's in this Gator wide receiver stadium. Third down play from the 26. Johnson throwing it deep for McGriff. Incomplete. Well, Travis McGriff had a shot at it, and he made one mistake. Instead of playing the football, he let the football play him because if he goes up and he catches this ball in his hands instead of trying to body catch it, he makes the catch here. Just a mistake on Travis's part of not going up with his hand and taking the ball away from Anthony Jones. He tried to tried to body catch it, and it bounces off his pads. The redshirt freshman from Detroit, Michigan, was right there with him. First punt of the game. Robbie Stevenson standing back. He's done a nice job kicking off tonight, but that is not a real effective punt as Joe Dana brings it out to the 42-yard line. A 32-yard punt by Stevenson and a four-yard return. We thought that we might see Josh Korn walk on sophomore punt tonight. In fact, Spurrier sort of threatened to make that move, but uh, <laughs> when push came to shove, he threw Stevenson back in there. Well, I, I think any time you, you have a man kicking off the way he does, you don't want to discourage him by not uh, letting him do what he does best punt, so he decided to give him first crack at it. All right, well, get in the game and get a Gator Gold card for just $50. Your Gator Gold card will gain you entry into all regular season volleyball and women's basketball gymnastics events at the University of Florida during the calendar year. The pass incomplete late in the second quarter and the, one of the officials just got decked. Here's the phone number to call on the Gator Gold Card. 1-800-34-GATOR. Get that Gator Gold Card today for entry into a, a variety of University of Florida sporting events. Well, they keep trying to work that matchup. Uh, Reggie Allen versus Elijah Williams, but so far Elijah's not having any evidence. He's able to run stride for stride and play the football. Crowley under pressure. And the pass is incomplete. Shorman, the intended receiver, Fred Weary, had him covered up. Crowley again was decked. I think that time it was Javon Kirst who put him on the ground. Whenever you can turn loose that front seven, and you've got those linebackers coming as well as those, those quick defensive ends as you see Javon Curse and everybody coming in. If you've got good corners, you can turn loose that front seven. You'll have great pressure in the pocket. But when you have to drop your linebackers to help out in the secondary, it's a little tougher to get there. Again, the big rush. Curse flattens the quarterback. The pass is incomplete. Javon Kearse, he, uh, he's been, uh, he's taken up residence in that Chippewa offensive backfield. Well, right tackle Gary Glowacki, I mean, I don't even think he has a glimpse of Javon Kearse as he goes by him. And Javon does a good job of coming around and staying low, and he just outquicks the right tackle every time, and it's just nobody gets a hand on him. Gators rush the punter again. Croft looking around for a flag, but there is none. Jack West Green to the 22. A 40-yard punt under duress by Croft and a four-yard return by Green. They just decided to come after this punt. They get good pressure. Came very close to getting hit with a roughing the penalty, roughing the kicker penalty, but no call by the official. The Gators have scored 49 points in the first half. Doug Johnson, going all the way in the first half, the quarterback has thrown six touchdown passes and the seventh touchdown. A good play by the special team is Travis McGriff as his third catch of the game. Sewell, the redshirt freshman from Detroit, number 26, is there to make the stop. Let's go to Larry Vitell on the sideline. Well, David, we've seen quite a bit of Damon Carroll. Fred Taylor's back in now at tailback. Eugene McCaslin's day is done. He has a moderate shoulder separation. He will be out for the rest of the day. Beyond that, it'll depend on how he responds to treatment and such, but no more for Eugene. Fred Taylor, 
and a lot of running room across the 50 to the 48. Ligon was there to make the tackle number 29. Not good news on McCann. Mentioned earlier that uh, Central Michigan doesn't want to get anybody hurt tonight for their Mid-American Conference schedule up the road. And of course, the Gators have the big SEC showdown with Tennessee in two weekends. Don't want to see any key players get hurt either. All right, uh, there we see a good job of running by Fred Taylor. And you know the, the reason that you needed Eugene McCaslin and as we get into the the big ball game, the SEC part of the schedule we need to have uh, healthy backs to replace them as we see Jason Gold does a good job of getting his hands on the football able to knock it down as once again Doug Johnson was trying to throw the ball down the middle of the field trying to hit his receiver coming through the middle of the field goes back gets a good pass drop one of the things that they have not done late and have not done early in the ball game is get good drops and he's able to drop it in the Gators have come out throwing the football in this first half. This is the 27th pass of the game by Doug Johnson in the first half. And this one's caught by the fullback, Terry Jackson. There was a flag thrown back behind the Florida line of scrimmage. 27 pass attempts in the first half. And Johnson, uh, 17 of 26 before that one. Would, uh, this one might not count. Looks like they'll bring it back. I don't remember exactly what the ratio last week was uh, about run the pass, 50, but I knew coming into this ball game, getting ready for Tennessee, it would not be the same. Holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty. Spot of the fall. Retain second down. Watch the left side of the line. Big Zach Pillows, deep story. I think to get Zach there is he's trying to keep the end from looping inside and gets his arm caught up inside. But if I'm the quarterback and I'm going to get hit, go ahead and hold him. Force the official to make the call. Oh, Carroll. A touchback across the 50. Carroll in the open field was a dangerous thing for the Chippewa. Carroll run down from behind inside the 15 by Jason Husband. Well, Jason Husband showed a little speed there himself as he took the proper pursuit angle. Not allowing Bo Carroll to get into the end zone. But this is what speed does. You see him reverse his field, turns up field, does a good job of reading the tight end block, and then he comes all the way back across the field. And here, you think he's off to the races, but the proper pursuit angle is the difference in why he's able to catch him before he turns it into a touchdown. And the freshman from Norristown, Pennsylvania, slipped away from Joe Paterno in the recruiting wars. Got a nice hand as he came off the field after the big play. White. We have a Chippewa timeout with 40 seconds to play in the second quarter. It's 49 to 3 Florida. All Gators in this one. Florida, a frustrated football team last week. Gators left the stadium with uh, only 21 points against Southern Mississippi. And it sure was a long week of practice for the Gators in preparation for this one. Very important to get that ship right at that offensive uh, game going tonight because Tennessee is two weeks down the road. Tennessee is two weeks down the road. And sometimes what happens, David, is that you, you get so used to going against each other doing the earlier part of training camp or getting ready for the season, and you come into the season and you're, you're a little ho-hum. You're not really ready to play even though you think you are. And I think offensively, they just were not ready to play. They made too many mental mistakes. You know, they start, they, they got back into the old habits of the penalties, et cetera. And today we see the correction. They've got some penalties, but more so they're sharp, they're executing, and that's what it takes. You need to play against somebody, get your feet wet, and then you go on from there, and hopefully today's game will get them ready for the Tennessee game in two weeks. Reporters asking Steve Spurrier during the week, do you think that uh, teams improve a lot? It's full record for touchdown passes in a game. Seven touchdown passes. And I, but I think the, 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 the real marquee here is that he did it in the first half. I don't remember what Eric Pressler did. Well, it was Terry Dean. And Terry Dean. It might have been in the first half, too. But this is just a good job of reading the defense again because anytime you can get your fullback, Terry Jackson, isolated on a linebacker, you know you've got the, got the win. That's the matchup that you want as he finds Terry Jackson in the back of the end zone. Doug likes throwing that fullback. Terry Jackson has three touchdown receptions tonight. 
We'll have another timeout. A little confusion there. Steve Spurrier on the sideline. Looking out there and talking to his players on the field. Let's take another look at the touchdown, Matt. Good job. Here you get a good job of, of, of what the defender sees if he's looking at it going on. But by the same token, I don't think a defender saw the ball at all because Terry Jackson came wide open that time. Doug Johnson sending a message uh, not to write him off. Anybody that thought he might not be ready to play quarterback at Florida. He's proven a lot to a lot of folks tonight. Johnson is now 18 of 27. And he's thrown for over 300 yards in the first half of the game. The extra point good again by Collins. The Florida Gators... They have scored 56 points in the first half of the game. Collins Cooper is perfect in the extra points tonight. One of, those, one of the worst things that can happen to you, David, is to be the team coming in after a good football team has had a disappointing week because you become the sacrificial lamb. Central Michigan, they play both defending national champions. They're the only team in the country, maybe the only ever, that has played the defending 1AA and the defending 1A champions in one season. They've got Marshall on their schedule out of the, uh, the Mid-American Conference. Marshall in its first year in the MAC, And uh, Dick Flynn, we'll see them later in the season. And hopefully for Coach Flynn and the Chippewas, uh, Marshall won't, uh, won't do what the Gators have done to them tonight. Well, I think uh, Central Michigan also has, is one of the first teams to ever play one of the top teams in the entire NCAA as well as probably one of the worst teams in Northern Illinois. So we've got quite a few firsts going with Central Michigan here today. Well, they played Northern Illinois last week and won that game 44 to 10. Northern Illinois is dead last in some uh, <laughs> preseason polls in 1A. Robbie Stevenson kicking off again. Dan Myrick is one of the deep men. He's uh, the guy at the top of your screen on the left side. Ball bobbled a little bit. Flowers coming out of there with it. Dodges one gator, but not the second. That's Rod Granny, number 47, who made the stop. The redshirt freshman from Cuthbert, Georgia. As you look at Eric Flowers, a frustrating first half for the Chippewas from Central Michigan. I imagine in the second half of the game, we will not see too much of, uh, if any, first uh, team players for the Florida Gators. I would be very surprised if they play much at all in the second half. Chippewa Wise keeping it on the ground, just hoping to get to the locker room right now with 15 seconds to play in the first half. Anthony Mitchell, number 98, was there to make the tackle for Florida. That'll be the last play of the first half. What an offensive performance by the Florida Gators. Stymied last week by Southern Mississippi. Gators and their fans thoroughly enjoying the 56-3 lead over Central Michigan, especially after what happened last week here at Florida Field when the Gators stumbled offensively against the Southern Mississippi Golden Eagles, but that has not been the case here tonight. Welcome back, everybody. David Steele and Nat Moore here at halftime. And I tell you, Nat, you couldn't ask for better things offensively from Florida than what we've seen this evening. Well, we've been waiting for an offensive explosion, and we got that in the first half. Doug Johnson was superb. All the receivers are doing a tremendous job, not only catching the football, blocking downfield, offensive line. That's what we expect with Florida football. Well, we know that Southern Mississippi had an outstanding defensive team last week in the opener. Uh, I'm not sure about Central Michigan. Uh, they were suspect defensively. Is it hard to get a take, though, on how much improvement that you've seen with this football team because of the fact that you're playing an inferior team defensively? Well, I think it's hard, but you, you still want to get sub under your, under your wing. The, the ability to go out and execute, adapt to what you see, and mature, and that's what Doug Johnson has shown us here today. Well, what have you seen uh, in addition to that from Doug Johnson? Uh, better decision-making in the first half? 
better decision making, even more so being patient. The ability to lob the ball, put some air in it when necessary, as well as using the cannon when he needed to. Well, the, the Chippewas came out trying to run the football, but that just wasn't going to work against Florida's defense, was well, it? There's no way that you can run the football against this front seven. They're too strong up front, as well as they're quick to get outside. They react and recover. You know, in 1994 against New Mexico State, Terry Dean threw seven touchdown passes in that game. Well, that has been duplicated here tonight by Doug Johnson, the sophomore from Gainesville. Seven touchdown passes in the first half. Let's take a look at them. Numbers one through seven, man. Well, he starts out going to for what could become his favorite receiver, Jamie Richardson. And then he looks right down the middle of the field, and he hits Terry Jackson, the young man that uh, they moved to the fullback position, and it's paid off. Jackson had a big first half. We'll see more touchdown receptions by him in a moment. And here is the playmaker for this football team, Quezzy Green, on a little fade route. And the freshman, Rod Frazier, the younger brother of uh, Tommy Frazier, gets in on the act. And, and a great effort to get the ball into the end zone, so give him some credit on that, on that touchdown. And this is just a great job of running by Terry Jackson using all of his blockers as we see Quezzy Green shielding off the last would-be tackler. Jamie Richardson caught touchdown number one in the first quarter, and uh, this is number six in and, the and second. That's where we saw the maturity of Doug Johnson. He put some air under the football to make an easy catch, and then he goes back to Terry Jackson, isolated, off the no linebacker. Doug Johnson, some big numbers in the first half. You look at the team statistics, first downs, uh, overwhelming difference in that category, and you go right down the line. Florida puts up 483 yards and one half of football. And as I said earlier, you, you know, you, you do that on an empty field, and that's, that's pretty amazing. Well, of course, this is an inferior team to the Florida Gators, but you still have to go out and perform. You've got to execute, and when you, when you look at critical numbers there, the one number that I always look at because it wins and loses football games is turnovers, and today the Gators have been able to stay away from the costly turnovers while being able to move the ball up and down the football field. You really can't say enough about Doug Johnson individually. He throws for over 300 yards in the first half. He has seven touchdowns touchdowns and uh, 18 for 27 I think were his numbers in the first half of the game total turnaround from last week has to be great for his confidence here tonight it's called character you know he was very much maligned after last week's ball game you know everybody was on his case should he be pulled should is he's the guy well today he's answered that he came back true enough it's not southern Mississippi it's not Tennessee but he's went out and he's done what the coaches have asked of him what do you think now Steve Spurrier does in the second half of this game as we prepare for the second half kick? Uh, does Doug, Doug Johnson, is he finished for the night? I, I would think so. I would think that Steve would pull him, but by the same token, he cannot abandon his offense. You know, if anything happens to Doug Johnson, he's got to get Noel Brandeis and Jesse Palmer ready to play. So I expect to see the Gators to continue to pour it on and put up points in the second half. Uh, you know, there are going to be a lot of people watching this in the second half and uh, Steve Spurrier is no stranger to criticism. If Florida comes out, continues to run its offense, as the Gators do, as you said, this is Florida football, there will be critics. Well, he'll get criticized, but, you know, if you worry about the critics, you'll never be the one there at the end of the year. You've got to go out and do what's right for you and your ball club to get them ready to play. Just in case you end up with a major injury, you've got to have these guys ready to play with some experience, and to do so, you've got to run your offense. Well, you and I agree on that point. I, I think it's going to be more of the same. It may be different, uh, different players out there running it, but it's going to be Florida's offense. Well, I agree wholeheartedly, and uh, I look forward to a big second half. All right, the Florida football team coming out onto the field. We're just about ready to go with the third quarter, but let's send it first to Larry Battelle on the sideline. Larry? All right, thank you very much, David. James Jones with me. And James, the mindset in the locker room, these guys know they've got to win. They know they're 2-0 and with Tennessee to play. What are you trying to get out of the second half? Well, you want to see the backup guys come in and, and, and keep the same performance as they had in the first half. If, if uh, Brandeis come in the game, you want to see them have the same success as Doug Johnson had throwing the ball off. As far as the defense is concerned, you don't want to let up. You can get hurt when you let up, and obviously some young guys get a chance to impress. Well, you want to go out there, like you say. You want to keep on playing hard, and you will get nicked if you're out there kind of lousing a little bit. So you got to play hard just like they did in the first half, just like it's the start of the game. All right, thanks a lot, James Jones. Now let's go back to David. All right, well, I think there's our answer as far as Doug Johnson is concerned. Uh, unless he's going to play without shoulder pads tonight. Well, in the second half, Doug is finished. And, well, and he had a great great first half of football. That is a telling sign when you see a young man with a hat on and his, and his shoulder pads off. But uh, much deserved rest for the second half. 
And Noah Brindise getting his arm cranked up. The senior out of Fort Myers is going to play some football in the second half, and I'm sure we'll see Jesse Palmer, the freshman from Canada, as well. Back on the field, Larry. All right, thanks a lot, David. Down here on the sideline is a guy people have seen before. Number four, Lawrence, right now with the Cincinnati Bengals. And Lawrence, first of all, tell us about life in the NFL. Well, this is no different to me, you know, but I'm getting paid now, you know. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's different. That's a good thing, you know. You know, trying to help out my family and stuff like that. So uh, right now I'm on a practice squad, and hopefully later on during the season, you know, I get activated to play and show them what I know, you know, and that's, that's how to play football. Tell me about getting, coming back here and seeing these guys, these young fellas looked up to you. Now you're watching them and watching them try to carry on some defensive tradition. Well, you know, you always trying to, you know, set the standards. And I think we did a good job of setting the standards uh, in the previous years. And you know, that gangster defense stepping up. We need more turnovers, though, you know, and just build and build and build it. And each game is taking them one at a time to get where we need to get. And that's back to back, baby. That's right. Well, good to see you, Lawrence. All right. Lawrence Wright down here on the sidelines. We're just about for the second half. David. All right. Thanks, Larry. Good to see Lawrence. We also saw Kerwin Bell down on the field for a pregame ceremony. Gators come back to support their team regularly here at Florida Field. And I think that's important, uh, especially when it comes to recruiting, because as a young man, when you're trying to choose what university you want to go to, you realize that for the next four years, everybody's going to treat you nice. But when it's all over with, the folks at the University of Florida, you'll always be a Gator. Adam Williams kicking off. Kicks it high and short. And it is uh, Terry Jackson who's had a couple of kick returns on that short kick. Jackson, who already has caught three touchdown passes tonight and blocked a punt. It's knocked down at the 35-yard line. And the quarterback for the Florida Gators will be Noah Brindis. Senior out of Fort Myers, Cypress Lake High School. Patiently waiting for an opportunity to play throughout his career. Really had a, an outstanding spring. Did a nice job. Also in the preseason. Made some noise, though, in trying to get that starting job in spring practice. Hands off to Fred Taylor. Taylor had a 42-yard run in the first half. Early in the football game, as a matter of fact. Pops off uh, about 13-yarder there. Ralph Sewell, the redshirt freshman from Detroit, number 26, was there to make the tackle. And we get another good look at it. just a little cutback as he comes out the back door. You see everybody on the offensive line getting a block on, getting a head helmet on, and a shoulder pad on their defender, giving Fred Taylor good room to run. By the way, that 42-yard run by Fred in the first half is the longest run from scrimmage in his career. That's extremely surprising for a big man with, with the speed that he has, but you know, he has not broken off some longer ones in the past. Taylor to the 42 of the Chippewas and number 50 Charlie Bush senior from Escanaba Michigan made the tackle he had nine stops last week possessions by the Gators in the first half touchdown 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 one punt and another TD that's, that's got to be a misprint that punt something went wrong there must be a typo Gets another first down inside the 35 to the 34. Sean Williams, number 12, a junior from Baldwin, Michigan. Made the tackle for the Chippewas. Central Michigan in the first half. Not a lot of action there. They had the field goal. The block punt resulted in a Florida touchdown. Picked up, carried in by Jacques Green. And a whole lot of punting going on by the Chippewas. Ben Dyes lets it rip. Kareem is the receiver at the 20. Husband has been uh, married to those Gator receivers all night and has not had a lot of success over there on the corner. Well, the defensive backs are not getting a lot of help, uh, David. What's happening is they're playing this vanilla defense, and the linebackers are not getting good drops, so there are big lanes for the quarterback to throw the football and the feast. Kareem and the, re the other receivers are doing a great job of coming back, meeting the football, not allowing the defensive back a chance to get there and destroy the play before they make the catch. From the 20-yard line of the Chippewas. Brandeis 
Giants give Brock to Taylor. Fred gets about seven more to about the 13-yard line. Fred needs a yard to get 100. McMaster's made the tackle, a sophomore from Gaylord, Michigan. You know, for a big man with that 222-pound frame, he just have tremendous feet work, footwork, shall I say, as he just slips would-be tacklers, making guys miss, hitting seams, picking up extra yardage. The Gators at the Chippewa 13. And dives to tight end Kenny. He pulled it in. Touchdown Gators. Aaron Kenny. A marvelous catch deep in the end zone. Good throw by Brendeis hitting Aaron Kenny in the back of the end zone. You know, the Gators have bounced up with that steam route when you've got that big target, 6'6", 266, going through the middle. You know, that's a perfect target for the quarterback to look for, and he's not hard to find, as once again they find the tight end going through the middle on a seam route. Easy touchdown. He just reaches up, plucks it out of the air. There you see a very happy young man. He's getting his chance to play, and uh, he wants to show Steve that whenever called upon, he will be ready. Well, that's his first touchdown pass in his Gator career. Brindise only played in uh, 17 plays last year in three games as a junior. Gave him a scholarship this spring for his hard work. Academic, uh, really very strong academically. A two-time member of the All-Southeastern Conference academic team. Well, he's done a good job in the classroom. He stayed with it on the football field. And, you like to see a guy that has worked like that to have some success on a Saturday here at the Swamp. Not only to have some success, but to be rewarded by giving him a scholarship for his loyalty and his hard work through the years to get to this point. And, you know, I think that he's a guy that if, if something did happen, let's knock on wood, that Steve would not be afraid to put in and, and trust to run this offense. Well, that was very easy, wasn't it? Gators use up three minutes and ten seconds on the clock, and now it is a 63-3 football game. A lot of fans uh, still here. You might think at halftime that we'd come back and see about half the stadium, but there might be 10, 15,000 that left their seats at halftime, but most everybody is still hanging around here at the Swamp watching this Gator route. Four there was Marquand Manuel. He is a highly talented defensive back. Get a lot of special teams play. We haven't seen him in the secondary. We'll see him in the second half, though, I'm sure. Young man with a lot of talent out of Miami Senior High. Wearing the Lawrence Wright's old member. Nice tackle by Terrace Ross on Reggie Allen. And the Chippewas have the football at the 18-yard line. Well, Reggie Allen is just has nowhere to run. He's trying to find running room. He cuts back, but Terrace Ross does a good job of wrapping him up around the ankles, bringing him down inside the 20-yard line. Well, after that first half, the Chippewas probably would like to take that $350,000 check and go on home, but they've got to finish it out. Well, I think if you're Central Michigan, you just want to work on the things that you normally work on, just like they're doing, running the ball up the middle. And getting ready to, to, to go into the crest of your season against teams that you match up better against. Hopefully you don't get anybody hurt, but uh, more so continue to work on getting better. There we see Eric Flowers coming through the middle as if they are able to open up a seam. And this is what they do best, run the football right up the middle. We see Tony George coming in for the tackle. First down by Flowers. Crowley on a rollout, connects with the receiver, out of bounds at the 37-yard line. It's Damon Pitt with his first reception of the game, a sophomore from Detroit, Michigan. Crowley pass to Pitt. Well, oh, this uh, Central Michigan program has been very stable through the years. They've only had four coaches since 1950. Dramedy was there, uh, I think, 16 years as head coach. Dick Flynn, his assistant. 
during that time. Now the head coach has stepped into that role. Continuity that uh, speaks well for that university, doesn't it? It, it, it says a, a whole lot for the university. And you know, 1994, I think they won their conference and had uh, one of the better teams in small college football. You talk about who Central Michigan will, will play next week, getting back uh, on their level. They'll play Boise State next week. The Boise State almost upset Wisconsin on Saturday. They gave, they gave the Badgers all they could handle. Well, that, that just goes to show you that uh, sometimes you think a team is a patsy or because they play in the Mid-American Conference that they're not good, they don't play good football, but when you play against people that you're evenly matched against, uh, you're able to rise to the occasion. Joe Dana makes the catch. Elijah Williams had a fine debut on the defensive side of the ball tonight for the Gators, the senior from Milton. The number seven rusher, 2,181 yards rushing for the Gators before this senior year, and they move him to DB, and he's done a great job tonight. Well, there you, you see the headiness of him as he, he loses his feet as he starts to come in for the tackle, but he continues to crawl on all fours, and he's able to get in there and get a piece of that tackle. Now, Eli is one guy that we might not see come off the field. He wanted to play every snap tonight to get ready for Tennessee because uh, this being his defensive debut tonight, he feels like he needs to be on the field no matter what the score. Great catch by Allen. He held on at the 21-yard line. That young man has made several outstanding plays tonight for the Chippewas. He, he just made another great play. Tremendous concentration. Elijah Williams was with him step for step in good position, but he went up and was able to stay focused on the football and make a very difficult catch as the ball is in the air. Just great concentration as he taps it to himself and then makes the catch as Elijah Williams is all over him. Well, the other catch. and then makes the catch as Elijah Williams is all over him. Well, the other catch, uh, circus catch that Allen made, Williams was also draped all over him, and Allen just uh, out fought Eli for the football. Trying to run up the middle again, Flowers is hit at the line by Johnny Rutledge. Seven stops a week ago against Southern Mississippi. Rutledge is there again. Well, David, that's a name we haven't called much this evening because uh, that front four has been doing such a great job that they haven't been able to get to Johnny Rutledge. As we see there, he comes up and hits flowers before he's able to turn it upfield for no gain. Triple is using some clock on this drive. The pass is incomplete intended for Shoreman. Tyrone Baker playing that left cornerback spot. And good coverage on the play. You know, this offense is so basic. Look like they want to run two routes. They either want to run the quick slant or try and fake the quick slant, take it up top. And the Gators have done a pretty good job so far of being able to control them, giving them the short pass. If they're going to execute and hit anything, it's the slant, but not let them go up top. Gators have Williams, Eli, at the right corner as the ball is thrown toward Elijah Williams. And he makes the play on Dana. Dana could not separate himself from the Milton senior. And it's tough to complete these passes when Crowley has to throw the ball a lot sooner than he would like to because there's so much pressure coming in the backfield that they've started to roll him each, uh, each way, trying to give him some breathing room. But just a great job of coverage by Elijah Williams. And you see why the Gators moved him to the defensive secondary and has tremendous athletic ability. Casey Wilson has already popped one through from 40 yards for the only points for Central Michigan. And this one might have been blocked, but it still managed to uh, eke over the upright. So Wilson is two for two tonight in the field goal department. And he is the sum total of the Chippewas offense. Our score, the Florida Gators 63, Central Michigan 6 on a beautiful night, North Central Florida. Central Michigan University Chippewas kicking off just narrowed the Florida lead to 57 points. The kick is short again, and Terry Jackson brings it up out to about the 37-yard line. Jackson has uh, certainly had a lot of work tonight. 
Florida Gator football on Sunshine Network is brought to you in part by Toyota dealers where the new Toyota Sienna minivan brings new meaning to the word value. And by AT&T Wireless Services. It's all within your reach, AT&T. Noah Brindise quarterbacking the Florida Gators. Bo Carroll, the freshman from Pennsylvania, fumbles the football. Florida turns it over for the first time tonight. I think he was down. It looked like his knee was already down. This was ruling that... Uh, well, you're right. The line judge came in there quickly and said, yep, let's spot it here. Well, the rule is the ground cannot cause the fumble, and he was definitely down. His knee was already on the ground before the ball came out. Take another good look at it. If you look to the right of your screen, you'll see Bo Carroll turning up field, and you'll see his knee hits the ground right before the ball comes out. All right, Gators with a break there, second and nine. Rendice has the pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. Big uh, C.J. Remo, the junior from Buchanan, Michigan, was able to get a piece of it. Let's see who blocked the field goal, Matt. Well, Javon Kurtz just does a good job of getting up, getting up as high as he can, and he gets a piece of it, but not able to get enough to keep it from crossing the crossbars. Great shot there by our cameraman on Sunshine Network. 7.38 to play in the third quarter from Gainesville. Ooh, a drop pass. Errol Jackson, one of the highly talented freshmen entering this Florida football program this year. Jackson out of Tampa. Played at Tampa Catholic High School, and that one couldn't have been thrown any better to him. That's a good throw. He just let the ball play him. And these are some things that as Coach Dixon get more opportunity to work with these young men. You know, there's another chance where the guy does not have confidence in his hands, and he's trying to body catch it instead of going out, getting it in his hands. And there's a good look of Coach Dwayne Dixon coaching on the sidelines. Hey, son, you got to go out. You got to get it in your hands. Don't let the ball get up to your pads. Good job of coaching by Coach Dwayne Dixon. Josh Korn is now punting for the Gators. They'll let it hit. And Korn, a walk-on sophomore from Lighthouse, Florida, kicks the ball out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. 32-yard punt by Korn, who uh, has been challenging Robbie Stevenson for the starting punt job this week for the Florida Gators. But when it came down to it, Stevenson is the guy that Spurrier trotted out there in the first half. So those two work together. I'm sure they're... Very close. Kickers uh, hang together. Uh, and that's what happened. You know, kickers are, you know, they're a weird bunch of guys, so they got to stick together. And they practice together. They do everything together. And you realize that sometimes it's not your day, and the other guy's got to go in and get it done. Eric Dance is the new tailback. The pass intended for Shoreman is incomplete. Just to follow up on your comment about Dwayne Dixon, I think he is one of the top uh, young receiver coaches in the country. He's done a great job with Florida's receivers. I know there's a lot of talent that comes here, but uh, when you hear professional coaches talk about receivers that have come through the Florida system, they all say to a man that these guys come with the knowledge that it takes to play at the next level. Technically, they are sound, and you've got to give credit to Dwayne Dixon for that. And, and, and whether you believe it or not, in most programs, that don't happen. There we see them running that slant route once again, and they're able to hit number six. Now Dana did that in the Joe first Dana. Half. He almost went all the way earlier in the game. Now that was Shoreman in the first half, I think. That was Shoreman. Just a little slant route, get a little separation, and see Elijah Williams coming across field, gets picked. But a great job by Teddy Sims showing that speed from the linebacker position, turning back downfield and coming back to make the stop. Chippewas at the 45 of the Gators. Ball carrier is Eric Nance. Nance had, a Nance had 103 yards last week Nobody against Northern did. Illinois as he and Flowers both went over the 100-yard mark. Two young men with uh, great running ability and you know that with, with what they do, regardless of how bad they're getting beat here tonight, I think they're going to be a solid football team because they run the football well. They're not fancy. They stick to what they do well. They just up against a superior team offensively and defensively today. They were number seven in total offensive yards per game last year. Storman has the football. Tyrone Baker is there to make the tackle at the 35. They averaged 477 yards a game last year. Number seven in the nation. The Gators were number two at 503 a game. 
and, and I think it, there's something to be said for you. Don't have to be fancy. A little play action pass. And Strahlik gets a gets a lot of zip on this ball as he gets out there in a hurry before Ronnie Baker come up and make, make the stop. We're going to see a lot of new shirts out there with blue jerseys for the rest of the game. Right now, Marquand Manuel, the freshman we talked about, it's been getting a lot of special team play, is in a strong safety. Keep an eye out for number four as Crowley makes the pass, and there's Manuel just as we began talking about him all over the play. The pass is incomplete. It's a good job of reacting up, breaking on the football, and that's what you look for when you when you look at defensive backs. Their ability to recover and break on the football. He reads the tight end coming out, then he reacts up, and he's right there on Reggie Allen as the ball gets there. Good job of just reacting to what he sees in front of him. Manuel, as you mentioned, out of Miami. Miami Senior High has had a few athletes uh, in all sports through the years, hasn't it, Matt? They're one of the top producers of quality athletes down there in Dade County. Miami High, Carroll City, Northwestern, tremendous athletes. Riley gi giving off to the tailback, Nance. Derek Chambers, another young member of this Gator defense, along with uh, another redshirt freshman, Daryl Owens, number 56, were there to make the tackle. One of the positive things to see these young guys making plays, getting an opportunity early on as freshmen, coming up with the answers on that defensive line. True freshman Gerard Warren is in the football game. It's one of the tackle spots as Crowley rolls to his left. The pass is caught by the tight end Simonson. Simonson to the 31. Teddy Sims there to make the tackle. Another Bell Glade, Florida product. Glade Central High School. There's quite a bit of talent that comes out of that Bell Glade, Pihoke, South Bay area as you see. Teddy Sims coming up making the tackle. Willie Cohen's doing a good job of not allowing the quarterback to get outside the pocket, forcing him to throw the ball early. Oh, it's a short game. Riley's pass is overthrown, intended for Shoreman. That stops the clock to 4-10 to play in the quarter. Long evening for Tim Crowley, senior from Jackson, Mississippi. Well, he only played in three games last year as a junior, had not played at all before that time. But uh, he shows you a lot tonight. He shows you a lot of character. He's able to stay in there and and take the punishment and you know he's only going to get better the team's going to get better because he's willing to you know, to show him that he's tough enough to take the punishment and he can be that leader they're looking for finally just dumping that football as he was almost hit before he got it away by daryl owens and a, and, a, and a very smart decision by crowley he knew that you know he was going to be sacked and it was going to be for a big loss he scrambles outside the park and he tries to buy time but once he sees that there's no receiver, he just tries to launch it as far as he can, but out of bounds to make sure that there, no one catches it. Force the official to make a call. Crowley has thrown the ball 36 times tonight, man. Completing 12 of them. Dick Flynn. That's that Gator defense. Here's pass number 37. Throwing it off his back foot, and it falls short. Intended for Shorman again. Javon Kirst. Well, Crowley will have made him pay again. Crowley will have nightmares tonight about Javon Kirst. Every time there's third down and long, he sees that bit, that number, number 42, Javon Kirst, coming up field and in his face. As once again, <laughs> Javon Kirst, Willie Rogers, all coming in to hit him just as he releases the football. Noah Brindis led the Gators on a touchdown drive early in the third quarter. Gives to Carroll. The sprinter trying to get to the outside, and he is out of bounds at the 50. This guy is going to make a lot of plays for the University of Florida football team. All you want to do when you got this kind of speed is to get him outside, and once you get him outside, good block by Alex Willis. 
you know that he's going to pick up some extra yards with that great speed of his. From the Chippewa, 48. Overthrows the freshman Jackson. Daryl Monte, a senior from Belleville, Michigan, was on the coverage. That was a good throw by Noel Brandeis. Even though it was overthrown, he threw the ball up and over. And Jackson has got to continue to run. That time he stopped. He's, he's waiting for the ball to be thrown in on the line. And the quarterback, knowing he had a defender in between him and his receiver, threw it up and over, where if he doesn't catch it, no one does. Only his receiver had an opportunity to catch that football. Second down play, Carroll. Carroll to the 30. He's gone. The freshman to the 10. Bo Carroll's first Gator touchdown. He has just gone over the 100-yard mark, did he not, for the game? Carrying the football. He's had some big runs tonight. And that will show you, David, what speed will do. All you want to do is get him in the open field. And the one thing I like about this man is that every time he breaks the line of scrimmage, he looks for the sideline. Tremendous blocking up front, starting with the fullback, Ron Frazier. He's got the lead block, and if you're the tailback, you get on his behind and just follow. Good balance. Good job of picking himself back up and then turning on the afterburners as he gets good blocks downfield from his receivers. This young man, unofficially 143 yards, net on five carries. And the extra point is no good. Collins Cooper missing it left. On, on five carries. Yep. An incredible average for Bo Carroll. The Gators have hit 69 on the night. As Bo Carroll, the freshman from Norristown, Pennsylvania, carries it in from 48 yards out and gives the Gators a 69 to 6 lead over Central Michigan. Kicking off for the Gators. And this is the freshman Myrick out of Sarasota on the carry. First time he's put his hands on the ball tonight. The only Floridian on the Central Michigan roster brings it out to the 26-yard line. Larry Vitell up in the stands, I understand. Larry, what you doing down there? Well, I, the obvious answer is they threw me off the sideline, but that's not exactly the case. See down here to my right, to your left, the number seven as the Florida Gators salute Danny Werfel, one of the most decorated players in the history of college football. Danny Werfel's number seven. He was a Heisman Trophy winner. Well, the spot over here, to your right as you look at it, was for Coach Steve Spurrier. But the Gator head man says, don't put my number up there. I never won any championships. I don't belong up there with a guy who quarterbacked the Gators to a national title. The funny thing about it is, David, as the years go by and as the coaching wins pile up, won't have to worry about putting number 11 on the wall. It may be a renamed stadium by that time. Wouldn't be at all surprised, Larry. Of course, uh, number 11 is now being worn by Thaddeus Bullard, sophomore from Live Oak, taking the jersey from uh, Ben Hanks, who wore it proudly for four seasons. Young man that really impressed Steve Spurrier, and uh, Steve uh, actually had him unretire his jerseys and gave it to Ben Hanks. Riley on the pass, and it is caught by Shorman at the 37. That looks like uh, very close to a Chippewa first down. Quick check. We look again. Matt, let's uh, take a look at the play. Well, they, this is just tremendous timing and between these two guys because all day he's been able to find Showman open. You know, just great awareness of where your receiver's going to be and he takes the hit, stands in and as Buck Gurley comes in and puts the hit on him. I don't know if I'd ever want to be a quarterback. It seems like they get hit too many times. Taken some blows tonight, hasn't he? Eric Flowers back in at tailback. Flowers has taken a pounding this evening as well. That time it's Buck Gurley, the freshman from Tallahassee out of Godby High School, number 99 to make the stop. You see Gurley and Chambers on the field with Willie Cohen's. Take another look. Well, you know, the interesting thing looking at that play is that there looks like it's going to be a hole and in a matter of seconds or half a second everything closes up that's that good reaction from that gator defense good quickness Riley 
Riley's pass is broken up. Fine play by Tyrone Baker. Reggie Allen, the intended receiver. Well, Steve Spurrier, Nat, is going to have uh, just the opposite job after this ball game, and he had last week. We take another look at the play. The job of Baker getting his hands on the receiver, and, and this is what football is all about. You beat, but now you recover and you make the play, not allowing him to come down with the football. As a defensive back, you're always going to get beat, but the key to great defensive play is the ability to react and recover, and Tyrone Baker did a good job that time. Third down play for the Chippewas. Rally under intense pressure. Rolls it up for grabs and threw it out of bounds. Juan Kirsch uh, was again in his face. There is a flag down back in the area where the quarterback hit the ground. Well, I think this time they're going to get him for intentional grounding. Yep. They let him get, it, get away with it once before. Well, he's just got so much pressure. Once again, he's, he's number 42. 54, 91, 29. I mean, that entire Gator defense on the offense. Five yard penalty. Lost it all. Third down. But you know, last week, uh, Coach Spurrier was really on his team during the week to try and pump them up, get them some confidence going, make them understand the urgency of the situation. After this one, it seems like uh, the problem is just the opposite. You don't want to get uh, too overconfident about this performance tonight. And I imagine the first thing you'll tell them is, let's just forget about this one. We did a lot of good things, but Tennessee is going to be a whole different ball game. Well, well I think he'll let them enjoy a couple days of the victory. Uh, whenever you whoop your team the way you, you, you have to do, or you had to do this past week, and they respond the way they have here today, you got to let them enjoy Back it for a couple days. Lost it all. Fourth down. But then after those couple of days of enjoying that, now you get them back to reality and you let them know that that's not Tennessee and you got to get ready to play Tennessee. Central Michigan kicking the ball again. Head coach Dick Sling, a long night in the swamp. Croft hits that one off the side of his foot and it ricochets out of bounds at the 43. 38-yard punt by... Ben Croft, senior from Marietta, Ohio. Florida Gators take over again, and we'll see our third quarterback of the night, freshman Jesse Palmer, out of Ontario, Canada. Highly talented player. Enrolled at Florida in January of 97. Had uh, the entire spring practice to get his feet under his uh, feet under the ground here at Florida. And it's really come on strong in preseason workouts. He's rolling on first down. Man, did he throw a strike in his first appearance as a Florida Gator. Hit Terrace Ross right between 8-8. Eight, eight. Well, this is amazing when you start to, to think of the Gator tight ends, that they are a big part of this offense. As we see Jesse Parma goes back, a little play action, does a good job of reading the safeties, sees that he can fit it in in between them, and hits Terrace Ross right in the middle of the safety and the corner. Steve Spurrier watching his offense just uh, absolutely explode tonight. Palmer throwing on his second play and it's to the fullback Frazier at the 16-yard line. Jamel Jefferson is there to make the tackle. Once again, that we talked about it at halftime. Steve Spurrier's offense is Steve Spurrier's offense. Whether it's 69 to 6 or it's 9 to 6, it doesn't matter. He's going to run the same plays with these quarterbacks, trying to get them some experience. We'll be back in just a moment to the Swamp as we go to the fourth quarter. In more minutes of football from Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. The Swamp has been good to the Gators tonight. Florida pouring it on. Central Michigan threatening to score again as the fourth quarter begins from Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. It is 69 to 6 Florida. Jesse Palmer, the third Florida quarterback to see action tonight, he came out firing. Well, and that's what you've got to do with the young man. He's a freshman, a, a guy that really needs to get his feet wet. And you know, you've got to run your offense. It's hard for these guys to get better if you don't run the offense that they're going to be called upon to run if something happens and they need to play. Hands it off to Carroll. Carroll springing to the outside. They'll not stop him. He's in for the touchdown. His second of the football game. 
Well, he just sees that corner of the end zone. He sees that flag, and he just turns on the speed and outruns Jamel Jefferson to the corner. Well, Nat, the Florida Gators have just scored the most points in a game than ever in the Spurrier era. Well, and, and no one can really accuse Steve of running up the score because this is just sheer talent by these guys. It's, you know, they get out in the open field. You can't ask them to fall down as we see Bo Carroll turns on the speed and gets into the end zone. And get this number, seven carries, 158 yards for Carroll. Not too bad. Not too bad, and that he's the reason that uh, Elijah Williams was able to move to the defense because you, you had a young man that was coming up that had just as much quickness and speed, at probably more speed, but just as much quickness as Elijah did coming out of the backfield. The extra point, by the way, by Jeff Chandler, a freshman from Jacksonville and a Mandarin high school, so Steve Spurrier's getting a chance to Use a lot of players tonight with his team on top of the Chippewas, 76 to 6. The Gators sending a message tonight out of Gainesville. It's on the football field, they're running downhill. Yeah, what do you do? You you, you bring in a Jesse Palmer and you know you, you tell him to hand it off. He hands it off to Bo Carroll and he scores. And if you tell him to throw it, he throws it down the middle of the field, fight, gets the ball to Terrence Ross, and another big play. So this offense is just clicking on all cylinders. And, so that's where you want to get to. You want all these young men to have confidence as you see a great hit by Terrence Ross as he goes down and makes the tackle, bringing Flowers down. Florida, Florida has 76 points, Nat, and in modern football history, 77 is the number. Well, I would... It's West Texas State in 1982, and I remember that game well. West Texas State scored two touchdowns early. It was 14 to nothing, and Florida scored 77 unanswered points. Uh, I don't know if Florida will, will score 77, but I would bet the bank that they, that they will score again before the day is out to break that record. Big 91, that's Derek Chambers, the freshman. He's been in on a lot of tackles tonight, getting a lot of playing time, a red shirt out of Lawndale, North Carolina. And uh, another guy stacked up in that front line for the Florida Gators. We have an injured player. And here, here's the risk for Central Michigan coming in here playing the Gators of getting one of their valuable players hurt. Is that Allen? Is that Reggie Allen is down. And it happened on a play where he was trying to, trying to make a block. And he trips over his own guy there running down the field. He and Dana got tangled up, number six. And he's in pain. Well, they've already had one serious blow to their offense when they lost Silas Massey, their tailback, who rushed for 1,544 yards last year, over 1,000 the year before in only six games. Allen caught 66 passes last year. And uh, first-team all-conference in the Mid-American Conference, so they don't need to lose him. You definitely would not like to lose your go-to guy when you've got to throw the football. And, you know, Crowley's shown me a lot of promise Hanging there, delivering the football. When he's had time, he's been able to put the ball on the money. That quick slant to Shoreman has been uh, probably the most effective play that Central Michigan has had tonight. That's about the third or fourth time they've connected. Eli Williams made the tackle. Let's go to Larry Vitell on the field. Okay, David, you noticed Eli Williams making that tackle, and that is significant. Florida has turned to a lot of reserve. Darrell Owens, Reggie Davis, Anthony Mitchell getting some important playing time. Well, Eli Williams hasn't had any playing time at corner. It's all new to him, so even if he's a senior, he's staying in there. Well, he's going to have Peyton Manning throwing his direction in two weeks. With all due respect to uh, Tim Crowley, that's going to be at a whole different level. You'll have Peyton Manning and... Marty Nash and Peerless, those, Price, Peerless Price and all those great receivers and you know it shows you a lot of determination on Elijah Williams part that he want to stay in and continue to work when everybody else is on the sideline celebrating he could be doing that too. Cross punt fielded by Travis McGriff at the 20 and McGriff is tripped up at the 24. Good job of handling the football as Travis McGriff had to run a long way as they were punting away from him to make the catch. 
Been picking up a couple yards, a couple yards. Not giving the ball a chance to hit the ground. 12 minutes, 42 seconds left in the football game. To move down and scored early. His first possession in four plays. And it's been pretty much that easy all night long. No team has scored this many points ever on Central Michigan. And they've been playing football since the late 1800s. We got a lot of new Gators in there. We'll try to pick them up for you as they uh, make plays. Number 45 is Ian Aylstock. He's a redshirt freshman from Bartonsville, Maryland. Number 45 is Aylstock. And there he is, the tailback in the I formation. Rod Frazier, the fullback. And Aylstock, the ball carrier, again tripped up at the 25. Joe Adam, a sophomore from Howell, Michigan, was there to make the tackle. The isolation of a young man that doesn't get much, much playing opportunity, trying to make the most of it. As you see him taking the handoff, and you could tell by the way that he took that handoff, David, he hadn't played a lot because usually you make a pocket, let the quarterback put it in, he's reaching for it. Give me the ball. Scout team fail back in the game with 11 and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Penalty flag is down as Palmer guns the ball over the middle. And the ball is caught by Alex Willis. Willis out of Jacksonville. Redshirt freshman out of Rebald High School. He has been uh, quite impressive. Been quite impressive, but when Richardson and McGriff. Green and all these guys start to turn it on. It's hard to get playing time, and you know, he's just got to keep working with the confidence that his team works. On the offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Eventually, some good things will happen for him, David. You know, the thing about football is that you never know when the opportunity is going to come. You just keep working, and eventually, you get your shot, and that's what he's got to continue to do. Willis is a walk-on, number 80, and his first career reception is called back. <laughs> That's what I say. You got to keep on working. Something good's going to happen for you one day. Number 19, wide to the right there is Travis Taylor. Also a reball high school product. The pass thrown underneath the defense, right in front of the linebacker, Gold, and the big fullback, Rod Frazier, is there to make the catch. The red shirt freshman. This guy's going to be a good football player. He's. Uh, got a chance to be pretty special I think as a fullback here in Florida well to be a fullback in Florida you got to have two things you got to have a tough nose and you got to have good hands he's shown us that he's got good hands by catching the football catching in his hands and when called upon the block he's done a super job of leading through for the tailback his older brother was a pretty darn good quarterback in Nebraska fair catch is called for and the ball hits Stevenson, probably his best punt of the year. And uh, the crowd gives uh, Robbie perhaps a little sarcastic applause here. He's been on the hot seat this past week after the performance against Southern Mississippi. And Barn is going to need him in a big ball game like Tennessee coming up. Going to need uh, their punting to come through. Well, Robbie Stevenson has always come through when the Gators have needed him. And uh, I don't think it'll be any different as they get into the meat of their, their, their schedule. And when called upon and they need a big kick when they're backed up, that Robbie Stevenson won't deliver. Well, he was certainly there in the big games last year. Nice play, tripped up by Daryl Owens. Dan Myrick, the freshman from Sarasota, was the ball carrier. That's the first time he's carried the ball from a tailback position. He returned a kick earlier tonight. Now, how did Myrick wind up at Central Michigan University? I'm sure you're wondering that... Uh, <laughs> that man from Sarasota, Florida. He's the only Floridian on their roster. About 90% of their team uh, comes from Michigan, but Myrick's high school coach at Sarasota Riverview is a CMU alum. And, uh, so that's uh, probably the big reason why he wound up there. Myrick's driven out of bounds at the 21. I thought you were going to tell me that he's got family or uh, friends or something there in Michigan that uh, made him uh, 
decided he'd like to go up in the cold country for a while. Quick pitch, just trying to get him outside using that speed, but once again, you see the talent of this Gator defense as they roam from sideline to sideline as Reggie Davis comes up, holds him to a very short team. That's third down, and Tim Crowley still chucking him for the Central Michigan Chippewas. He's gone the distance tonight and has taken a pounding. He's thrown 42 passes. And here's number 43. His receiver was out of bounds. He may have made the catch, but he had both feet out of bounds when the football arrived. Elijah Williams was there. Well, I think one thing that coach, the Central Michigan coach want to do is he want to get Crowley as much experience as possible and playing against a defense like this, as long as he comes out of the game uninjured, can only add experience and only help him. Ben Croft's going to need a couple of days off. Oh, he's going to have to eat this one. It was going to be his 10th punt tonight, but he swallowed it back inside the 10. The rush was upon him. Well, the first guy there, I think, was John X. Nitus that forced him to pull it down. The, the kicker knew that it was going to get blocked, so he pulls it down, holds on to it, and Cedric Warren is the guy that comes up with the tackle. Just a great job of penetration by that entire Flater, Gator special team, not allowing him to get the punt off. They're at the 11-yard line, 76 points on the board already. There's the tailback at his ale stock. High stepping across the 10 to the 9. Well, Florida got 77 in a game against uh, West Texas State back in 82. In 1913, 144 to nothing over Southern. I don't think that uh, school record is in trouble tonight. Do you? How do you score 144 points every in a football time, game? Every time you get the ball, you score a touchdown. That, that was back when they they stopped the clock after after every play. Palmer gunning it to the end zone. The man is open. Touchdown. There we see why Jesse Palmer came in here so highly touted as we saw the arm strength as he's able to get the ball to Alex Willis, or excuse me, Ian Skinner. Back in the end zone as he's able to line it in. Perfect throw for the touch as we get penalty flags down after the catch. And it's uh, against the Gators. The celebration. The celebration penalty is called against Skinner, the red shirt freshman scoring his first touchdown for the Gators. He's another Miami touchdown, senior high school product. Ball, non contact ball on the offense. 15-yard penalty. Foul goal from the 18. Well, the one thing about scoring touchdowns, you got to act like you've been there before. It's just a corner route, and Ian Skinner does a good job of running his route. But then again, <laughs> this is his first time. As you can see, he, he realizes at the last minute, I think, that he made a mistake as Rod French is like, hey, slow down, son. Act like you've been here before. He just wanted everybody back home to get a good look at it. I still think that's the dumbest penalty in college football. I agree. Collins Cooper, extra point. And the Gators have 82 points in this football game. It's a modern school record, 82 to 6 over the Chippewas. Unbelievable. There you see it. That's the numbers. 82 to 6 with 757 still to play in the game. Larry Vitell on the field. Uh, David, first of all, the unsportsmanlike conduct. I know we like to see the kids celebrate, but the one thing they've made clear is do what you want, but keep your helmet on. And when the helmet came off Ian Skinner, that is automatic by rule. It's got to be called, and he got a talk or two when he got back to the sideline. Also, thinking back to those 77 points against West Texas State, you know what I remember most? That black Labrador that got on the field in the fourth quarter, he gained more yards in the second half than West Texas State did. Yeah, you're right. The other thing I remember, Larry, is West Texas State scored a touchdown early and then onside kick after their first possession. They scored a touchdown, recovered an onside kick, scored quickly again. It was 14 to nothing, and the crowd was stunned. But then Florida went on to get 77. Thad Buller, number 11, made a bone-jarring tackle on the kick, and uh, Central Michigan will have the ball at its 20-yard line. Sunshine brings you University of Florida Volleyball this Monday. The Lady Gators visit Notre Dame.
We'll see all the action live beginning at 8 o'clock right here on Sunshine Network. We play your game. Lady Gator volleyball team. Boy, are they exciting to watch. That should be a great match at Notre Dame. Pete Shepard, the new quarterback. Finally, Crowley takes a seat on the sideline. A well-deserved rest. Handoff is to Myrick, and the freshman from Sarasota is out to the 30-yard line. Now, Rod Grady made the tackle. Now, I guarantee you there's going to be a lot of talk this week about this football score. Well, there's nothing there's a lot of can do about that. I know that, I mean, but you're going to hear it. Is you, you've got to go out and play, and, you know, if you are a practice player, a red shirt player, scout team player, when you get in the ball game, you want to showcase your wares, and as we see, no matter who they put out there, they're just executing and getting the job done. Shepard, uh, redshirt freshman, threw one pass last week. Very inexperienced player out there now as Owens makes the tackle on Myrick. And the thing about it, uh, you know, one thing, a point to make, I, I believe, uh, a team like uh, Nebraska will score 70, 80 points. And uh, they get criticized as well, but they continue to run the football. And like you said earlier, if their people are just out there blocking and running and uh, can't be stopped, then what can you really say about it? Now, Steve Spurrier, people would say, why doesn't he just keep the ball on the ground? Well, that's like asking Nebraska to all of a sudden start throwing the football when they get a big lead. And there's no way you can do that. It's not fair to the kids that come out there and work every day in practice for this opportunity. So when you, when they hit the field, they expect to play as we see the Chippewas pick up the the first down on third and short. Oh, it was uh, it was easier than that. Wasn't that hard taking candy from the baby? It's been easier tonight. Well, it's been extremely easy. But you know, if you look at what the Gators are doing, they've got their third and fourth team out there on the field. And they're still making plays. And, and, and that's what you build for as a program. You want to get where you've got enough talent and, and you've got depth in every position. And the way you get there is you work them. You get them ready to play. Myrick is hit hard at the 35. That's Granny again. Redshirt freshman from Cuthbert, Georgia. Making some big plays out here tonight. Good solid tackles. You know, a lot is not uh, made of Steve being able to go into the state of Georgia and come away with some great, great talent year after year. You see Grady coming up, Jock, uh, Jacquez Green, Nafis Kareem, guys like that that uh, are in the Bulldogs' backyard, but Steve's able to go in there and get them. Shepard's pass is incomplete. And that took about a second and a half off the clock. 5.22, the clock stopped. It is 82 to 6. We're going back to blaming Steve and this Gator offense for running up the score. Do you blame the other team for throwing the football instead of running it to get out of here? I mean, how do you how do you handle it? It's impossible. This is just a uh, a classic mis mismatch. That's 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 all it is. And it really is uh, a bit surprising. I mean, to to have this kind of score. It's got to be surprising no matter what the circumstances. That was a nice throw and catch. Shepard threw that uh, run and throw it across his body. Demetrius Lewis made the tackle, but a big catch by Damon Pitt. Well, he did a good job of getting outside the pocket, a little play action, and he pump fakes, and that's what fools Cedric Warren. Cedric Warren bites the cheese. As they go a little out and up, and he gets behind him, and Reggie Davis has to come over and make the tackle. Uh, I mean, Demetrius Lewis, excuse me. Shepard showed some arm strength there, throwing... Across his body, running to his left. And off to Myrick, hit behind the line of scrimmage at the 35-yard line. A tackle made by Owens again. Myrick down the carry. That by Owens. Good job of reading, reading the play, shooting the gap as you see the linebacker. Wrong side linebacker Owens coming in for the tackle. I do wonder if the circumstances had been different, if not for a, a tough game offensively last week against Southern Mississippi, if not for the fact that Tennessee is two weeks ahead with an open date between now and then. Would uh, the game be handled differently well, by Florida? I don't think so. I think this, this is this their is offense. A... This is what they do. And because of that, you've got to stick with it. And you also need to build some confidence. You, you've got to get these young guys confident that they can score. And the only way you do that is continue to do the same thing that you always do, repetition. Well, it's 
been a big night for the Florida Gators. It has been a total nightmare on the other sideline for Central Michigan. A proud football program out of the Mid-American Conference with a lot of history has just come in here and gotten whacked. Javon Kirsch steps up in the gap. Makes another big tackle for the Gators. Clock continues to run now with 4.14 to play. And, and, and that there was a perfect example of what we've been talking about for the last five minutes. You know, you want to work on your third down passing situation. You bring in Javon Kirsch. You bring in the guys that don't get a lot of work in practice against top-notch competition or against live competition. So you bring them in. You work on what you, do, what you need to get ready for the ball game. And you see Javon Kirsch coming in making the play. There's the 10th punt of the game by Croft, and it's out of bounds at about the 11-yard line. The clock stopped with 3.46 to play, a 27-yard punt. The score is 82-6. to six. The number one right Gators look like national chill stock the ball carrier as time is ticking down at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. The swap, very good to the Gators through the years, and especially here tonight. 42 wins, two losses in the Spurrier era here. The only two teams that have come in here and beaten Florida since 1990, Florida State and the Auburn Tigers. That was the last uh, loss here two and a half seasons ago. We've got some great games here this year with Florida State coming in again as well as Tennessee in two weeks. It is will be tested. Florida has to go on the road to some tough places. Auburn looked good Thursday night in the win against Virginia on the road. Big win for Terry Bowden's football team. That's an experienced team with a solid defense and outstanding quarterback. They're going to make some noise in the Southeastern Conference West. LSU's got a lot of talent out there. I think that West Division is definitely up this year. Well, they've got some talent out there in the West. And the good part about it, or I don't know if it's the bad part about it, we'll get a, a barometer on the Gators early on because they, they have to play quite a few teams in that West Conference. Quarterback is Larry Rickard, by the way, a junior from River Park, Florida, out of Bishop Moore High School. And he... Gives off to the fullback, Frazier. Burke Maxwell, a senior from Rocky Ford, Michigan, made the tackle, number 36. So the fourth quarterback uh, on the field tonight for the Gators, this is Rickard, handing off to Frazier. And here's one of the pluses of having 10, 12 good offensive linemen, because no matter who you put in, they're clearing the path for these Gator backs. All right, let's pronounce the young man's name correctly. It's Rehart, R-I-C-H-A-R-T, the quarterback. Larry Rehart out of Winter Park, Bishop Moore High School, the quarterback for the Gators on his sequence. So we've seen Johnson through seven touchdown passes in the first half. Brindy threw one, Palmer threw one. Now Rehart directing the Florida Gator offense, the fourth string quarterback. Saw Trey Killingsworth on the on the field. A man that's been used in kickoff situations. Number 44, wide receiver as well. Number 81 is Nick Shirali. Wide receiver out of West Palm Beach, a sophomore. A lot of walk-ons getting playing time here tonight. As Rehart fires it. And it deflected, almost picked off, incomplete. Jamel Jefferson, number 22, hand that one slipped right through his fingertips. Now that's a play where I applaud Steve for throwing the football. Rehart gets in the ball game. When is the next time he'll get an opportunity to play and you give him a chance to throw the ball down the field? You know, and if, if the critics are upset about it, that's their problem, but the young man deserves the same opportunity as all the other quarterbacks that play the game because he goes out there and practices just as hard. And Rehart is hand, uh, handed off the baton to Billy Young, number 14 the fifth quarterback of the evening, a 5'9 sophomore from Haines City. Really young earlier in the game. He's the, he's the guy that hand signals the plays in from the sideline. Schottenheimer did the last several years. So Young is able to hand the ball off and take a snap in a Gator uniform. And that has to be a thrill for a young man, as you say. He works hard in practice. A tremendous thrill with the idea when you're out there and you, you're working, you don't know if you're going to ever get on Florida Field actively participating as a player and when that opportunity presents itself team gets way ahead and it's something you'll always cherish 
Nice scene as Young came off the field. I saw Elijah Williams, senior team captain, walk over and give him a high five. Horn is the punter. And uh, Dana made the catch. I think we may have the uh, interfering with the receiver rule enforced here. You got to give him six feet. Got to give him a couple of yards this year. Interference with the opportunity. Infraction with the two-yard violation. Five-yard penalty. First down. So the Chippewas get the ball at the 41-yard line. Only 17 seconds left. We'll have one more snap, and that'll be it. Barna has set uh, some records tonight in the modern era. 86, uh, rather 82 is, uh, is now the standard by which all other Gator teams will try to reach. <laughs> and uh, also nine touchdown passes tonight, Matt, is a Southeastern Conference record for a team. Well, that's... Eric Dance almost popped it deep. Well, that shows a lot of character by the Central Michigan team. They come out, they run the football 15 seconds, they go, they go three wide, but they actually just hand it off. They want to run the clock out, try and get on home without getting anybody else injured. And uh, they did not get the stamp off, I don't think. The football game is over. And gratefully so for the Chippewas of Central Michigan. Florida Gators, very, very impressive. What can you say? It was uh, just a remarkable performance. Even against a team from an inferior conference uh, to the SEC, Central Michigan, still a football program with a lot of pride and a lot of tradition, and it has to hurt that, that young man, that coach Dick Flynn. Bobby Stoops, uh, his defense was outstanding again. Florida's offense just exploding tonight after scoring only 21 last week and really sputtering off and on in their opener. Very few hitches tonight. Let's send it to Larry Vitale with the head ball coach. All right, thanks a lot, David. Coach, a dominant performance today. What stands out in your mind? Well, these games can hurt you if you don't watch out, but uh, uh, we were ready to play and uh, played pretty well. But we had this team out, man, and uh, got out of hand real early there, but uh, we still had to just sort of let everybody play, and it just, uh, you know, the score ran up. But uh, anyway, uh, we threw the ball and caught it pretty well early in the game. What kind of progress did you see in Doug Johnson? Oh, Doug had a good night. He still made a few mistakes here and there, and it's not going to be near this easy the rest of the way. This, uh, this is a team we, we had out personnel a big way, and it got out of hand, but uh, hopefully we'll realize it's not going to be this easy the rest of the way. Bo Carroll's becoming a heck of a weapon. Oh, Bo's a, he's a tremendous player. He, he's a track guy who can play football. You don't find many of those, and he's, uh, he's exceptional, no question. See you in two weeks. All right. Coach Steve Spurrier, now let's go back upstairs to David and Matt. Well, you get the feeling that sometimes these are harder for Steve to handle after the game than uh, the 21 to sixes. Well, I, I think so. I, I think that he expected to win big, but, you know, as a coach that you're trying to get better, it's tough when you play weaker opponents, you blow them out, and you really don't get a chance to test the metal of your players. And really, can you tell how much better you did get? Well, I think there was some improvement made here. That young man certainly looked very, very sharp, and the Gators roll on 82 to six and win again in the Swamp. We'll be back in just a moment with more comment right here on Sunshine Network. Back in the Swamp, the Florida Gators, 82-6 winners over Central Michigan, along with David Steele and Nat Moore. Larry Vitell with you on Sunshine Network. Joining me, Gator defensive coordinator Bob Stoops. Bob, how would you assess the, the way the guys got after it tonight? Uh, good attitude. They came out, played hard, played for four quarters. That's all we ever ask of them, and uh, and they did that. Play, played pretty well, and uh, you know we'd like to play, had a shutout or tried to. That's what we tried for all the time, but uh, still the guys played well and played, had a good effort. You got Eli Williams out there, a lot of work at corner. Uh, got, he got a lot of snaps today. He needed them, and he, he really looks good. Um, uh, he, he's going to be a really good player for us. He already is, and, and uh, he got a chance to be one of the better uh, better DBs I think I've ever coached. Two weeks for Tennessee. Uh, that's right, and uh, now, now it'll be time to start looking at him. So uh, we really haven't to this point, but uh, now it'll be fun to, to prepare for him, be a fun environment. Thanks, Bobby. Nice, hey, great to be here. Big win for the Florida Gators. Back up Upstairs we go to David and that once again. All right, thanks, Larry. And uh, boy, that, that, that young man has good reason to be proud. He's done 
a tremendous job with the Florida defense, and uh, uh, he's got a lot of athletes back there, but he's got them in the right place, too, Nat. Well, Florida's always had great defensive personnel, but they haven't been able to pull them together and, and climb to the top of the SEC and, and to become one of the top defenses nationally. And Bobby Stoop, in two years, have been able to mold them into a great defensive football team. Florida wins it easily, very easily tonight. 82-6, to a record-setting performance by the Florida Gators. We'll be back with a final